called. It's too cold. Ah. Oh. This is the price I pay to smoke during the day. It's freezing cold outside. I took both of my kids to the bus stop this morning and I bundled them up really well, but for me, I just put on my sandals. You know, because I live in the Pacific Northwest and this is what people in Washington State do just to prove to the world that they just don't care. It's raining, it's cold, they go outside in sandals. But uh, yeah, now my, my feet are really, just really, really cold. I put on some insulated socks. I put on an insulated shirt. I've got a duck hunting jacket, vest, underneath. And then on top of that, I've got my other jacket. Because I have to have my window open if I'm smoking in the house. I can't smoke in the house with my window closed. Otherwise, you know, I, it's a hazardous environment. And I don't want that for my family. So I got my window open, I've got a backdraft thing going on, but it's freezing cold. It's gonna be good for the computers though. I mean, I don't want them overheating or anything. So, Lord knows my water cooling system is about to crash at any minute here. It looks precarious. I, I, I know you can't see it, but I made this, this loop this water cooling loop myself and some of the pipes are starting to sag which is a bad sign probably yeah any minute now if if the screen just goes black and i disappear from the internet for a while that's why it's because my water cooling loop just finally decided to collapse i'm starting to regret that kind of wish i went with the traditional case fan system there but Oh, well. Oh, man. Wasn't Alan Wake 2 an absolute blast yesterday? I can see why it had eight nominations at the Game Awards. Can you believe that? They announced the nominations for the Game Awards yesterday, and Alan Wake 2 walked away with eight nominations. That's insane. Of course, they pulled the same thing off in 2019 with Control. How many nominations did they get back then? It was like seven, seven or eight or something like that. Sadly, in 2019, they only walked away with one win. They won Game of the Year for Art Direction. Uh, it wasn't, um, well, they, they won, yeah, they won the, the, the Game of the Year for Art Direction. That's right. They didn't win the overall Game of the Year, but I didn't even realize that. Anyway, it was such a, it felt like it was a sleeper hit because I absolutely loved Control and I can see why they won, um, Game of the Year for Art Direction, because it was just stunningly beautiful. But uh, Alan Wake 2 is just hilarious. I mean, they had an entire extended, like, Swedish death metal musical number. And I'm not even joking. Like, in the, mid <laughs> the middle of this weird, otherworldly horror detective game, you've got this Swedish death metal musical on a talk show host. It was brilliant. It was absolutely freaking brilliant. <laughs> it was, it's just great, great, great time. So if you missed that broadcast, you're going to have to go check it out. But today, we are doing Starfield, and uh, I'm really enjoying this pace. <laughs> this Last month, it was crazy when I was doing Starfield every single day. I loved it because it was so much fun, but it was exhaustive. It was just absolutely exhausting and trying to manage all of the footage that I was saving, you know, just... I've complained about that enough. I'm not going to complain about that anymore. But now I'm down to once a week, and I feel, I feel good about that. I, I, I feel like I'm getting a great little dose of Starfield every single week. Now, we've already completed the primary plot, so what's left? Well, there's a ton left, and honestly, this is the part that I have been waiting for. Like, don't get me wrong. I've thoroughly enjoyed the story. I uh, Especially the United Colonies plot, the Crimson Fleet plot, the Ryujin plot, those three stories are the highlights of the game. The primary plot was okay. It was, it had some interesting moments. Um, the entire implementation of New Game Plus is thought-provoking and interesting. It's not something I would have done, and it's not necessarily the best narrative choice, I think. Like, I don't know if it was the best option. But it's, it's definitely thought-provoking, and I, I walk away not being 
totally displeased by it, it's okay. I think the thing about New Game Plus that I'm most frustrated by is that you've got this entire chunk of the story, what happens to the universe if you decide to go through the Unity, which is locked behind this wall that if you pass, you lose everything, except for your level and except for your perks. Aside from that, you lose all your colonies, you lose all your companions, you lose all of your ships, you lose all of your progress on every single quest. You lose everything. So to unlock that part of the story, what happens to the Starfarer after passing through the Unity, you have to give up everything. And I don't like that. Like, I, I get why they did it. Like, narratively, it, it makes sense within the lore of the universe they're trying to produce. But it's their universe, and it's their story, and they could have told a different sci-fi story without implementing a world where part of the story is locked behind this point of no return, this event horizon, where if you pass, you just lose a ton of the progress. Any game design, I think, where you force your character to repeat doing things that he has done over and over and over again, I think is poor design. And that's essentially what they're what they're doing with this. They're uh, locking a bit of the story behind um, a wall, and if you pass that wall, you have to repeat all of your colony building, all of your ship building, all of your questing. You've got to do all of that again if you want to see the little nuances that they've changed. And and I, I just, I, I don't like that. It's not the end of the world, right? It's not like, Absolutely, you can still access so much of the game, and that's one of the things that I really appreciate about it, is we don't have to go through the Unity, and we still get the vast majority of the game. 99.9% .9 of the game is not locked behind that event horizon. But it's that 0.1% that I want, right? But I, I can't get without passing through the event horizon. So, a tiny little quibble from me. Uh, but it's little things like that which make me understand why Starfield walked away with only one nomination from the Game Awards. It was nominated for Best RPG alongside Life of P, Baldur's Gate, and a number of other titles. And it won't win. It, Baldur's Gate will clearly win Best RPG. It's just... It will. <laughs> so, I mean, it's frustrating because there are so many things about Starfield that are great, that are absolutely lovely, that make me thrilled to sit behind this camera every week and play this game and create lore videos and share that content with you and explore this universe with all of you. And yet at the same time, every time I go live, I am reminded, I am reminded why it didn't quite get there. It didn't quite get to where the, the fan base was expecting it to go. Uh, which is a, a slight disappointment. However, if Cyberpunk 2077 has taught us anything, it's taught us that you can drop from an amazing height to your lowest of lows, but then you can climb from your lowest of lows back to crest your amazing height again, right? I'm, Cyberpunk 2077 was nominated all these years later for uh, another Game Awards title for best ongoing game, right? Uh, so, you know, the same could be said for Starfield as well. We've got a number of DLCs, I'm sure, that are planned for Starfield. Uh, who knows exactly how much new content is going to come out for this game, and that stuff can be nominated for Game Awards as well. That stuff could completely revitalize the community for Starfield as well. So, there's still a lot to hope for with this game. Chris says you should play Phantom Liberty. I know, every time I see anything about Phantom Liberty, it makes me want to play it. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to open up my schedule. Like, I started Baldur's Gate, and I, got, I want to finish Baldur's Gate. Uh, you know, we did Resident Evil 4 a while ago, and I got to finish that. So there's just so much going on. And then Alan Wake 2 drops. I want to make room for it. I don't know if I'll be able to do it this year, honestly. I've just got so many games that I'm playing. I'm playing four games a week, four different games a week. That's a lot to get through. Uh, but I definitely want to try Phantom Liberty. Maybe next year, maybe early next year, I'm thinking I might be able to have some room for that. We'll see. Well, it's great to be live on Twitch today. Uh, I'm really excited about being live on Twitch again. And, and it, I, I got to thank all of you guys. 
Uh, first of all, for letting me know that Twitch changed their partner rules, allowing me to go back on on Twitch again, and uh, for continuing to uh, follow me on Twitch. Like every time I check out my Twitch channel, I'm gain I've, I've gained so many new f subscribers, so many new followers, and uh, I let uh, Twitch languish for years. Many of my f fans on YouTube might not know that I was actually live on Twitch before I was live on YouTube. Before I did any of my Fallout videos, I was doing Scotch and Smoke Rings on Twitch for years. Actually, I started Scotch and Smoke Rings on my own personal website using, I think, a broadcaster called um, Livecaster or live, live stream, something like that. And then I went to uh, Ustream.tv uh, and then uh, JustinTV turned into Twitch TV and then I went to Twitch and then I was live on Twitch for years and years and years before YouTube finally came out with their own live streaming software and uh, it was then I switched to YouTube after the success of my Fallout 4 channel. So I was live on Twitch for a very long time and I established a little community there and uh, then I was gone for years but I come back and you guys are all still there and you guys keep following and keep subscribing and it's so exciting. It just humbles me and makes me so thrilled to be live all over the internet. Good to see everybody on Twitch today. Old Turtle Chill Sarah. <laughs> Good to see you there as well. Of course, we're still live on, on Facebook. Jessica on Facebook, Roman Christopher, and have no plans to change that. And of course, we are live on YouTube, and it's great to see all of my YouTube members and subscribers today. Alt Grendel, Sean Fernango, uh, Sean Fernango, Connor Scriv, Laura Elstad, Tony J, S, Danilo, Jonathan, Cat5, Mr. Virus, Richard, Connor Scriv, I'm starting to repeat names here, Air Suave. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any suggestions for what you would like to see me uh, tackle today, Go ahead and let me know, uh, because this is the part of my Starfield broadcast and live streaming that I have been looking forward to, and I have been waiting for for a while, because this is the sort of self-directed portion of the gameplay, which is what I love about Bethesda RPGs. Being able to start my own adventure and find my own story and go at my own pace, I'm really looking forward to discovering and uncovering sort of the little side locations that aren't related to any quest and just thoroughly exploring them. Now there was uh, someone on Twitter who gave me a recommendation of something to do today and I forgot to jot it down before the broadcast so let me quickly go through my my Twitter feed here. And it, it wasn't all that far down so there we go. It's from Slatty Bartfest, of all people. Uh, he says, When you've finished the main quest in Starfield, the Elios Retreat on Elixil 2 has a little side quest. All right, I'm going to make note of that. Now, I had a bunch of wonderful notes from you guys, but then I lost power. I lost... I lost power last weekend. I lost power twice this weekend because there are so many trees here in the Pacific Northwest and with the wind kicking up and the rain weighing down all of the dead tree limbs out there, power lines are going down like mad in the fall. All right, uh, let's see. Elios Retreat on Elixol 2. Okay, cool little side quest there. According to Slatty Bardfest, it's Caden Shade with the first super chat of the day. Caden Shade says, do you ever want to start an evil playthrough? I always think about it, but give up because I just don't have the heart for it. <laughs> it's interesting. You know, I that's uh, the way I am with most of the games that I play. And it's the way I was with Fallout as well. It wasn't until I started producing content for Fallout that I went and did all of the evil choices just so that I could be a completionist and share the complete stories. Um, and I'm glad I do, like especially for things like the Nuka World DLC for Fallout 4. When I went through on my own just to play it, I, I just obliterated all of the raiders. I killed them all and just explored the park and walked away going, 
uh, you know, that, that DLC was okay, but it wasn't as good as Far Harbor. But then when I created my raider and I did my raider playthrough, I actually did all of the quests for all of the different raiders and they were so much fun and the characters were interesting and I got a lot more out of that DLC. So there's something to be said for doing an evil playthrough because you'll get more out of the game. You'll just get something, uh, something new from it. Um, but yeah, I can understand why it's a little hard to, to get to the point where you actually do your, your evil playthrough. Jersey says, loving the new ox plushie. Hope I get to spend some money on some one day. Yeah, me too. Here it is if you haven't seen it. I showed this off, I believe it was last Thursday. This is the Ox Plushie prototype. This is not the finished version. They're going to make a few changes. Like I wanted them to sew down the suspenders here because they felt a little flimsy. I wanted them to change the shape of the cigar so it looks a little bit more torpedo shaped. And to tack it on in there really strong because I don't want that ripping out. Um, but then, yeah, that's about it. It's more or less done. I've been chatting with the team today. They're really excited with your uh, reaction. I told them all about how you guys reacted during the broadcast on Thursday. So we're hoping to get into production. I'm just waiting to hear back from them on uh, how long it's going to take them to complete those minor changes that I asked them to do. And then once they're done, we can get in production mode and I can have it live on one of my shops. My goal, of course, is to get it done as soon as possible because the holiday season is coming and wouldn't it be great to have this in my shop in time for the holidays? That's the goal. And I think we can make it. I think we can do it. At the same time, I'm working with an artist to come out with a holiday design for my shop. Um, last year, we did Oxing in a Winter Wonderland. I might, I might turn that one back on if people are interested in having that design again. But I want something new. I want something unique. I just don't have any ideas. So I went to my art team and I, I, I asked them to come up with some ideas, which is not typically something they do. They just, I'll come to them and I'll say, this is my idea. And they're like, all right, well, we can do that. Uh, but um, I'm out of ideas for holiday-themed designs. So I'm, I'm, I went, I'm meeting with them later this week. And they're going to try and brainstorm some some designs for a, a holiday theme. But yeah, hopefully I'll have this in the shop in time. It's going to make a great little gift for children and adults alike. Though, I, I, I don't know. Can you give a kid a toy with a cigar? I mean, maybe if it was... The <laughs> I mean, there were cartoons with, with rabbits smoking and all sorts of stuff back in the day. Uh, but they don't do that these days. Okay, maybe, maybe I shouldn't say that it's child-friendly because of the cigar. It, uh, I'll, I'll leave that up to parents. We'll leave that up to parents, of course. Let me put this back. Where were we? Uh, <clears throat> Alt Grendel says, you need a generator. Alt Grendel, I have a generator. The generator doesn't prevent a power outage. All the generator does is bring the power back on once it goes out. Uh, which, of course, doesn't solve my initial problem, which is having all of my computers turn off during a power outage uh, to begin with. So I do have a generator. It automatically kicks on 30 seconds after a power ad outage, and it uh, it stays on until power is restored. Uh, but uh, sadly, I still lose data, and it's still possible for me to fry a hard drive, which, which happened two weeks ago. Three Michael says, how do you prefer to enjoy your space harem? <laughs> consecutively, never, all at once. Details, please. Asking for a friend for science. Is it a space? <laughs> Is it a space? I mean, I'm, I'm dating Sam and Sarah and um, Andrea. Does that constitute a harem? I, I, I don't know if it does. Um, that's a very, what do you mean consecutively? What do you like? What do you mean? Like a, a, having dinner consecutively? That's three, you know, date night dinners in a row. Um, that's a lot of food consecutively. Is that what you meant? Con I, I don't know what you mean by one after another or all at once. It's I'm confused. You need to be more clear there. Three Michael, a little bit of a clarification on your on your comment. E Eileen G says uh, Maheo one uh, Sony de Falco's Island. Ma, ma, oh, well, you know what, Eileen, thank you for the super chat, but I'm really confused. I don't, uh, I don't understand. Is that a, oh, is that a location? 
I see, I see. You're trying to give me a location to explore. All right, I shall take notes. There's an island? Cool. Maheo. There's a planet called Maheo 1? In what system is that planet? Sony de Falco's island. Uh, Caden Shade says, will you be coming with, out with any Starfield merch? Uh, probably not. I don't really have any ideas for Starfield merch. Uh, but never say never. Maybe I'll come up with something. Dr. Root says, hello from Dead Horse, Alaska. Hey there, Dr. Root. Good to see you, my friend. Spent so many years, my entire childhood in Alaska. Fond memories there. Julian Z says, good morning, Ox. So good to see you on this chilly Starfield Tuesday. Hope you're staying warm. Fallout 76 is celebrating five years today. What's the game plan for today? Hope it's fun. We're playing Starfield today, uh, as uh, we have on, on schedule. I realize that Fallout 76 is celebrating their five-year anniversary today. I might be part of it, maybe. But of course... We'll never know because we're doing my broadcast today, won't we? Anyway, uh, but yeah, the, it's really exciting that they've been uh, doing this for five years. I can hardly believe that it was five years ago that Fallout 76 came out. It just it doesn't seem like five years. It doesn't feel like five years. But holy cow, it's been five years. It just boggles the mind. Congrats to them and uh, to the entire Fallout 76 community. Sarah says, fatigues setting in from nursing school. Miss y'all. Sarah, we miss you too. Good to see your smile on face back in the chat. Uh, sorry that fatigue is setting in. I suppose that's the way it is with any profession, uh, any school that you go that you go to as well. <clears throat> but good luck with nursing school. And again, congratulations on it. Omega, I'm sorry, Omega Volwin or Omegalvelwin, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, says, uh, will you react to all the different universes in Starfield? No, no, there's just, no. <laughs> the, the amount of time it would take to get to that point, just absolutely not. I'm not, I'm not putting that amount of time into it. Uh, Change the Punk says, how about Oxen, the other reindeer? Akin to the movie All of the Other Reindeer? But instead of dog, you're well an ox. I see. So all of the other reindeer itself is a pun off of this off of the song. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. So olive instead of all of. Gotcha. But then to put a pun on a pun, we're just adding layers on the pun. So we're gonna go oxen the other reindeer. Or it's more it's less of a pun and more of a reference. Alright, well I can I can put that in there. Oxen, the other reindeer. Interesting. I might be able to do a Rudolph spin there with some good old uh, Oxhorn merch. Anchor Wing says, been a fan since Fallout 4 vids. Really glad to see you're doing well. You're the best, Uncle Ox. Thank you so much. Anchor Wing, good to have you here today. Jamin Cohen says, have you ever tried using a smokeless ashtray? Or are they insufficient? Um... A smokeless ashtray. I mean, ashtrays typically don't smoke. Oh, oh, I see. So when I put the cigar down into the ashtray, it sucks up the smoke, or it's like an enclosed ashtray. A um, couple of things. So the the reason smoke enters the house when I <clears throat> when I um, smoke a cigar is because I blow smoke out of my mouth. It's not the smoke that is emitted from the cigar while it's at rest. It's the smoke that I billow out of my mouth while smoking that permeates the house unless I've got a window open. Uh, that said, any kind of ashtray that encapsulates a cigar so that all of the smoke gets kept in the ashtray is also going to choke off any oxygen which the cigar needs to maintain the, they call it a cherry, it's the, it's the burning part at the foot of the cigar that you don't want to snuff out, because if you snuff it out, then you have to relight it, and sometimes that can make the cigar taste a little bitter. Uh, that said, uh, I don't really have any smokeless, ashtra uh, smokeless ashtrays. It's certainly something to explore. Thank you, Jam and Cohen. Flynn Vasine says, have you heard of Mayflower Cigars? I have not heard of that particular brand. Mayflower Cigars, interesting. I'm familiar with lots of different types of cigars, but I don't think I've heard of that particular brand. I'll have to make a note of it. 
and check it out for later. Thank you, Flynn Vasine. Zarteth says, I use a CP1500 AVR LCD3. Very specific. For when power goes out, strongly recommend investing in a UPS to prevent data loss and or hardware failure due to uh, power flops. Well, I have no idea what a CP1500 AVR LCD3 could possibly be. Sounds fascinating. Uh, however, uh, based on chat feedback, I did sign up for Blazewall is what I think it is, which is a data backup service. And it's it's been a, almost two weeks now, and I still have not backed up all my data. That's how much data I have to back up. I have it on whenever I'm not broadcasting, and it's backing up data all day, all night, every day, every night, and I still have about 300,000 files to back up. I started at over a million, over a million files that I was backing up. I'm now backing up. I'm, I'm at the 300,000, so it's been working hard, but I'm not fully backed up yet. And anyway, I switched to that and started uh, tackling that in order to prevent losing any data during the next power outage. Zarteth says that was a model number number you'll want to look up. Thank you, Zarteth. A model number for what? Uh, exactly. A model like a what? Like a, a generator? Because I already have a generator. I have one already. I'm probably not going to get another one with... I'm pretty pleased with my generator, but... Uh, I'll definitely look up that model number in the future to see exactly what it is it might be. Mod oh, Zartet says a model number for a UPS. A uh, uh, universal power supply, I guess is what that is. It's a big battery so that the PC doesn't shut off. An uninterruptible power supply, says Zartet with some clarification. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. An un I see, so it's a battery that you plug your entire rig into so that it doesn't shut off during a power outage. Oh, clever, clever. Yeah, thank you, Zartet. I'll definitely take a look at that. That's exactly what I need. Oh, I should have thought of that on my own. That's a great idea. Thank you, Zartet. All right. Okay, let's start with the game. Let me relight my cigar here. My new microphone just keeps wanting to sway right into me, and I don't like that. I'm trying to think of what I could do. I could, I could wrap this. I don't know if that'll help. Maybe it will. Okay, uh, hold on. <laughs> Just to remind me what Slanty Bartfast wanted me to do. <coughs> Ileal 2. Ileal 2. The problem is we don't know what system that is in. Von Rex says that I missed a super chat. Did I really? Oh, sorry about that. Uh, Art Pixel says, Hey, Ox, did you hear the conversation where Andrea tells the story to Sam on how she killed three spacers with a butter knife? Dull, but effective. I, I missed that. That sounds like a great little story that I'll have to uh, see if I can get, get her to trigger. 
All right, what system is Ileal 2 in, or is that what we are looking for? I'm going to go and check it out. Ileal 2. Starfield. Come on, what system? Oh, Ixil. Ixil, okay. So it's Ixil 2 in the system Ixil. Close to Bardeen. That's good to know. All right. Now, I did some running around when I was shooting footage, so I'm going to skip my autosaves and go straight to the... Oh, no, I don't want that. Shoot, that's right. Uh, we were on the Kepler R just before going into the Unity. And so that's where we're going to load. Okay. I have all the artifacts. I need to assemble them into the armillary on board my ship. No thanks. All right, I already talked to my friends, so this is the farthest we can go in the primary plot uh, before we go through the unity. And so we're going to ignore, th ignore that. Now we have all of these side quests. We've, we've plowed through many of them. We really have, and but all of these appear to be really um, small. They're minor, minor side quests. So, <coughs> let's see if we can find Ixil. Now, it was close to Bardeen, and if I recall, Bardeen was... Uh, oh, there's Bardeen. All right, Ixil is going to be... Oh, it's right in front of my face. Ixel, I've been there. And there's Ixel too. Have I done this already? The Ilios, the Elios retreat. Go to what quest is this for? Fracking station. Oh, power from beyond updates here as well. Settlers slipstream. What have we got here? Don't look like a fellow homesteader. Something you wanted? You're settlers then. What's that like? <sighs> Catching a sunset knowing that you well might be the only person in the whole galaxy getting to enjoy it. <sighs> if there's a feeling better out there somewhere, I've never felt it. Heard anything interesting? I'm just counting down the hours until I can sleep in a bed in some real gravity. Okay, well, we could piracy, but uh, let's trade instead. I got some knickknacks I could part with. A control rod and tungsten. That's what he calls the knickknack. All right, that's it. Right, now what quest do I have 
that wants me to go here already. I guess we'll find out when we get there. Who's Goonie Boo and Dramas? There! Go to Ilios. We got that after the location of the ECS constant. What triggered this activity? Go to Ilios. We must have overheard a conversation somewhere, but I have no memory of anything wanting to send me to Ilios. All right, well, let's check it out. The Elios Retreat. What exactly is this? Danny Baum on Facebook. Looks clean. Let's set it down. Says hello, Ox. Hello there, Danny Baum. Afro Afrown says, I got that quest from a random conversation of guards in Aquila City. Gotcha. So it could have been from anything, really. Could have been Atlantis, could have been Aquila City. I am not sure rehabilitation can be a valid alternative to incarceration. But I would be happy to be proven wrong. Wow, Andrea, you seem to know a lot more about this than I do, as we just landed here. But apparently it has to do with um, incarcerating people who were injured? I don't know. No wonder no one will work for you. My man is missing, and you're all just here, what? Waiting for him to wander back through the gate? Mr. Halftown, we are trying, but we don't have the manpower. And now half my crew thinks your little band of convicts is just waiting to drag us off and scrap us for organs. Mr. Halftown, our security officer has been put into the infirmary trying to find your worker. We're doing everything we can. All I ask is that you and your crew be patient. You have nothing to fear from us convicts. We are handling it. Then get it done. Or else we are going to have problems. You have my word. Oh dear, what on earth has been going on here? We've got a missing worker. We've got a bunch of convicts. We're apparently looking for the worker. And we've just discovered the Ilios Retreat. Sky Natre says, Oxhorn, I just wanted to take a moment and thank you for all the times you've been there for me and didn't know it from when my daughter passed till now. I get encouragement from you. Thank you, Oxhorn. Sky Natre, I'm so sorry to hear about your loss. I can't even imagine what that must be like for you, but I'm grateful that you're watching. I'm glad you're here, and it's great to have you as part of this community. Halftown's furious about how this has all gone down, but can you blame him? They're not just gonna have us sit here, right? They've gotta scrap the job, right? Well, I don't know, let's go find out. Quest Marker wants us to go in there. That apparently is the retreat. Let's see what's up here, though. My crew isn't lifting a finger until my man is found. <sighs> Can't believe I bought into this place's crap reform program story. So what is it you do, or I guess, don't do around here? I'm supposed to be the construction foreman. 
It's my job to make sure the Helios retreat gets built to whatever standard these folks want so they can run this reform program or whatever. But it's also my responsibility to make sure my crew can do their jobs safely, which sure as hell isn't the case right now with one of my people missing. So right now, I'm just waiting. Panda Assassin says, hey, Ox, on Twitch, big fan of your Fallout vids on YouTube. First time watching your stream. Thanks, Panda Assassin. Glad to have you here. Good to be back on Twitch. Anything you can tell me about this place? Don't know, huh? The staff, they're all ex-cons. This place we're building is gonna be some kind of resort to rehabilitate other criminals. <laughs> Teach them how to strip ship engines or type 40 words a second or whatever to keep them from <laughs> having to commit more crimes. <laughs> Couple of them already went through the training now they want to get this place done to turn out more students. Type 40 words a second or whatever. <laughs> oh my god. Eric the Red says back on Twitch. Did their terms of service change? They did. That's why I'm back on Twitch. So are you interested in helping the galaxy's criminals too? Is that why you took the job? Why does anyone take any job? Credits. And these folks have plenty. But I mean, come on. What they're selling here? Fixing the settled systems by giving criminals career training? You really think the Crimson Fleet are just one typing course away from becoming model citizens? It'll be interesting to see exactly what moral this quest is going to try to convince us of. Especially uh, cons uh, considering our last episode. In my video, my lore video over the, the weekend, I did a crew story on Jessamine, who is a uh, Crimson Fleet raider, whom we find aboard the key. And she tells us a story about a smuggling partner of hers named Caitlin. A smuggling partner who came from a very rich family. A rich family where she could have learned any trade she wanted to, done anything she wanted to, and yet she just couldn't bear to have a silver spoon in her mouth, and so she decided to become a smuggler, right? Um, so if, if the moral of this place is that criminals just need education, the only reason there's crime is because people aren't educated and they don't have any skills. If that's the moral that we walk away from this particular quest, I don't understand how they're gonna be able to square that with some of the other criminals some of the other raiders that we've met in this universe who are doing it out of choice, despite having plenty of other opportunities. So let's see what our choices are here. We've got, if they'd had more options available to them in life, yeah, maybe they would be, of course. Then uh, you'll get no argument from me. I think the plan here is naive at best. It's not something I had ever really given a lot of thought to, or you know, my mistake for asking, let's talk about something else. I mean, um, it's difficult because there certainly are plenty of people who do commit crime out of necessity because they've got no other option and they're starving and they need food, right? That definitely happens. But is it going to be the thing that solves all crime in the settled systems? I don't know. Um, for the moment, we'll say naive. Exactly. And look, I know some folks have a tough out there. I've employed my fair share of ex-cons over the years. But you know how they turn their lives around? They did their time and got jobs instead of making the same bad choices again. Those are options everyone's already got. No retreat required. Well, wait, wait, wait a minute. I thought the entire point of the retreat is to teach people a skill set or a trade so that they can get jobs. Right? If his argument is that people only go back to crime because they don't have jobs, then he would be for a program that would teach ex-cons trades and skills so that they can get jobs. Uh, so we've got exactly, you commit a crime, you've earned yourself punishment, not pampering, or you must have had brilliant surgeons. There's no scar from where they removed your heart. <laughs> 
or can't say I've really got strong feelings one way or the other. Or we can pass a persuasion check to say, you gave those employees stable lives. Exactly what the retreat wants to do. You would agree with that. Okay, this is kind of where I was going. You are getting lost in the method, despite your goals being aligned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the pathway to that goal matters. If they're all here just sitting around learning a trade, just like they would on a job site. Yeah, uh, this guy. <laughs> maybe, maybe you got a point there. But I'm sure you didn't come here just for a debate. Let's talk about something else. That was interesting. We chose the persuade option, but we didn't actually have to pass a persuade check. I don't know if I like in inconsistencies like that. If you've trained me in your game that I'm always going to have to pass a persuade check when I click the persuade button, but then just in some random quest you don't, it's inconsistencies I don't like. Anyway, uh, you seem really concerned for this worker. What's keeping you from finding him yourself? Because I'm not the one whose job it is to keep this place secure. We're not soldiers. Just folks who were sold a load of bull that we'd be safe doing this job, and I'm not about to risk more of my people out there. Well, I can't say I blame him. People first. Take care of your team. Take care of your crew. He's doing the right thing here. Why put anyone else at risk until we understand what happened to the missing worker? I want to help. Oh, yeah? <laughs> it can't be worse than the situation we're already in. The boss, Sloan, she's heading up the manhunt, if you can even call it that. Talk to her and she'll get you up to speed. All right, Jonathan Halftown. Uh-huh. Let's see what's in here. When are we getting armed, boss? I'm not giving you a gun. But what if those cons come after us next? You ask me for a gun one more time, it's not the cons you're gonna have to be afraid of. Sheesh. Fine. So do they think that the ex-cons who are running this retreat are responsible for the missing worker? I have a feeling that they're not, and it's gonna be our job to prevent all of these people from being prejudiced and judging a book by its cover and resorting to armed violence. But who knows, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they did do it. And uh, the game is trying to teach us that once a con, always a con. <laughs> we'll see. All right, we got some beautiful neon green water here. Lovely. An interesting choice of location. Relaxing, I suppose. Speaking of which, let's take a look at this planet. Water, chlorine, copper, iron, chlorosilanes, alkanes, gold, and antimony. Abundant fauna, abun uh, a moderate flora, average magnetosphere, plenty of oxygen. It's, uh, it's a great planet for a retreat. I, I wonder what trades they're trying to teach the ex-cons here. All right, our quest wants us to go in there. So we're going to do the exact opposite and go into the trading post. Okay, we got lots of foodstuffs, grapes and oranges. Oh, look at all this tasty stuff. Hello, Monica Blum. You dropping off? Didn't think we had any deliveries until next week. Got an invoice I can look at? We could lie and say, made the drop off to your boss. He said you'd have the payment for me. 2,500 credits. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna try and uh, rob these people who are trying to rehabilitate criminals. 
Uh, so instead we'll say, I'm no delivery person, just checking this place out. Oh. Don't get many visitors this far out. Not a lot to see at the moment, but once we're open, the hope is to have plenty on offer. Imports from around the galaxy, stuff made by our residents. Happy to let you peruse what we've already got in. Mostly just the basics at this point, though. Okay. What was that argument I saw earlier? The construction foreman Half Town and his crew were scrambling their undergarments because one of their guys wandered off the other night. Probably a little too much glug glug. But now the entire construction crew thinks we're going to slit their throats just because most of us have a criminal past. But look, if you want to get involved, Sloane's been coordinating the manhunt. She'll have all the info you might need. You're a former criminal? What'd you do? Mm-hmm. Most of the staff here are. Got me for digital intrusion and grand larceny. Was in a bad place. Needed a lot of funds. Fast. So I hacked a couple Galbank servers. Yeah. Had maybe six years left on my sentence in Aquila when Sloane and Nevin swooped in. They said they'd pay off my whole bounty if I ran through their pilot program. I didn't have much else going on, so I said sure. It was hard work, but Sloane. The woman is compassion in human form. She stuck with me. And now I'm here, running the retreat shop, and maybe someday one of my own. Hmm. They paid off your bounty? Where'd they get that kind of money? Sure did. Anyone who commits to joining the program gets their bounty paid off by the retreat. Not sure who's footing the bill, though. I presume it's coming from outside donations because Sloane and Nevin aren't exactly rolling in cred sticks. Who is footing the bill? Follow the money. This is gonna be interesting. Mogster on Twitch says it's been pretty cool hey, seeing- still with us? Uh, watching this channel grow and seeing the following. Congrats to you, Oxhorn. Thank you so much, Mogster. All right, let's see what you got for sale. They've got all the necessities. All right, uh, lots of food, baguette. Well, this is where we wanna go if we want any necessities? Catch you later. Oh, advanced lock door. She's looking right at me. Would an ex-con mind if I just took a peek back here? Probably. Tell you what, we'll pick that lock and explore. Maybe after we've completed the quest and uh, done a little bit more exploration inside. The Elios Retreat. Ready. I am skeptical of whether this retreat will achieve its goals, but I applaud their efforts. You applaud? <clears throat> How often do you applaud? I thought it was applaud. Three Michael on YouTube says, Hi Ox, why don't you use more performance enhancing substances in the game? I'll bet one would help with your space harem. Also, I hear there's a drug that'll prevent Andrea from flinging inappropriate grenades. You know, I don't think they have little blue pills in Starfield. Um, they have everything else though. Uh, if they did, it would probably in, be an alcoholic form and it would come in a sippy cup. Because that's what they like to do in Starfield. <laughs> Alright, so this is where they're expanding the retreat. They need to do some mining, and that's where it's set to expand. Let's see what they're, or how they're 
progressing down this way. Got a classroom. Cool. I feel like I'm exploring a vault. This is great. We got a kitchen. Makes me wonder if uh, if the retreat has a kitchen with a bunch of free food, then what's the need for the shop that only sells food? The shop outside, it only sold food stuffs. No gear. Water closet, let's go check out the bathrooms here. Locker rooms, I should say. As this place is in under construction, these should be empty. Look at that. Well, no, we got... Oops. That was set to owned. Usually the cred stits are... Oh, see, that one's not. It's inconsistency. This is what I hate about games like this, where you just... Some cred sticks are not set to own. Other cred sticks are, and they're found in the exact same place. No rhyme or reason. I expect every single one of the innumerable cred sticks throughout this game to have consistency. Other else, uh, uh, otherwise, uh, the game is getting an F. An F from me. Okay, so, the water closet still under construction. bedroom is finished and furnished with a dartboard and everything. All right, I wonder who lives here. Slippers? Okay. And a coffee maker. Somebody actually lives here. But it appears to be the only one that's done. That one's almost done, currently being painted. Ooh, here's another one that's done. All right, so some of the uh, ex-cons have moved in. Wow. Nice little room. <laughs> Jamin Cohen says, I realize you want to wait to use any mods, but you really ought to download the Star UI Inventory mod. It doesn't do anything but massively improves the inventory interface. Yeah, thanks, uh, Jam and Cohen. I uh, believe it. Uh, if anything, the inventory interface could certainly serve to be improved in the game. Actually, I think one of the biggest improvements for this particular game that I think they would do, that I think would be really good, is organizing the uh, star systems. Wow, I haven't seen that. A, a plushy star pal? That's cool. Hey, the new Atlantean 4 permanently grants the recipe for the beer brat platter food item. All right. I can't tell you how many times I've wanted to revisit a planet that I previously visited only to get completely lost in the star map unable to find the planet because I don't know what system it's in or on what side of the universe it's at. Find, having a way to organize all of the places you've been to already uh, I think would be a better I, I think is absolutely necessary. Also, finding a better way to organize all of the lore that you've explored. Ooh, we've got an infirmary and a guy lying Just here. don't try anything while you're here, alright? We've got enough problems already. Greg D'Angelo in his bare feet and a jumper. How you doing, Greg? Whatever it is you need. I'm not the person who's gonna get it for you. Okay. 
Sloan send you with my next round of painkillers? Can't come soon enough. Is this one of their guys that they sent to go try and find the uh, the worker? Look, I should rest. So how about you leave me alone? I think I remember her saying that they already had one injured person who went out looking for the missing worker, and I believe this is probably him. Okay. Well, we've got that staircase. And also, meditation room. Let's check out the meditation room. Oh, wow. Well, still under construction, but they've, they've got the candles. And the chill music. Did I just hear a gong? I think I just heard... Oh, and we got some drugs. Neurojack, Synapse Alpha. Wow, I could totally meditate in this room. Okay, that's it for the meditation room. Let's head upstairs. Okay, counselor or administration. Let's go to administration. Uh, I'm sorry, are uh, you lost? Because if you're here to enroll someone, I'm afraid we're having a, just a minor crisis. And it's going to be a while before we're evaluating any applicants. What's the crisis? Where do I begin? It's been a cascading series of issues. The most recent is that one of our construction workers has gone missing, and attempts to find him have turned up nothing, which is what this retreat is going to be if we don't manage to find him. So I hope you'll understand why I can't take your application at the moment. Okay, so far this is really interesting. Both sides have a reason to find this guy. These guys that need to find the worker, because if they don't, it is a blot on the reputation of the retreat, and they'll likely go out of business. The construction team wants to find the worker because they value their people. So, did the guy really disappear because he got drunk? Is it his own negligence, or did something nefarious go on here? Enroll someone? Enroll them in what? What exactly is this place? This is, well will be the Elios Retreat. Someday we hope for it to be a bastion of education and growth for some of the galaxy's most needy. It's incarcerated. That, however, is feeling more and more like it might never happen unless we resolve our current crisis. So it might be best if you just moved along. <clears throat> we could say apologies, I'll get out of your hair. Or we could say, I'm not here to sign up, but I might be able to help with your problems. Oh, that's awfully kind of you, but... You know, we could use some more manpower, actually. Speak to Sloan. She's been taking point on the... Well, uh, she'll be able to explain it all. So what's there to do around here? Currently? Very little. But once we're open... Should that day ever come? We hope to have all manner of training and personal development courses available for our residents. Most of our staff are formerly incarcerated themselves, so we hope to be able to provide a level of service unlike any other in the galaxy. What was that argument all about? Well, our construction foreman, Mr. Halftown, is understandably upset that a member of his crew has gone missing. It's put a complete stop to all work on the facility as Mr. Halftown's crew doesn't believe the staff and myself can be trusted with their well-being. And our attempts to defuse the situation by finding the missing crewmen have failed thus far. Sloane's been trying to keep everyone calm, but I honestly don't know how much longer this can go on. What is it you do here? 
Ah, I'm the facility's chief administrator, co-head of the whole retreat with Sloan. She handles most of the resident side of things. Making sure we've got the right people for the program and those people have the right tools to succeed in their own development. I keep the lights on and make sure things hum along smoothly. Which has been harder of late. You're all criminals. What'd you do? Ah, I am the sole exception. Ah. I was a neighborhood administrator for years in New Atlantis. Was tasked with maintaining the well section of the city. Home to many of the UC's most underprivileged citizens. I saw firsthand what havoc the bounty system could cause in a neighborhood. Parents in prison, money funneled away from basic needs. It can become a cycle. Here, we hope to give people the tools to escape it. Interestingly, this first option is not grayed out yet, so let's choose it again. What's there to do around here? Currently, very little. But once we're open, should that day okay, so ever come, thing. we hope to have all... Most of our staff are for... It's just, it just isn't graying out appropriately. So much to get done. Interview Thursday, 0900. Uh, Three o'clock got rescheduled. Wow. He has all this room on the whiteboard, and he chose to hyphenate the word rescheduled. Odd. Okay. Well, counselor. Ooh, I love that fish tank. Sloan Temi Tope. I'm sorry, love, but the Elios retreat isn't taking new residents right now. We've had some issues, a missing person chief among them. But you're welcome to rest up and refuel here as long as you'd like. So long as there's no bounty hunter after you that's going to kick my brand new door off its hinges. You guys get a lot of bounty hunters causing property damage around here? Not yet, but it's certainly a risk, given the retreat's intended line of business. But I'm not about to send anyone packing who might just need a place to collect themselves. What's the Elias retreat? Well, at the moment, it's primarily a collection of shipping containers and unused construction materials. But... The plan is to make this place into a growth and education residence for the galaxies incarcerated. We'll offer job training and a support network for folks that otherwise just while away their days in prison just because they didn't have the credits to pay their own bounties. Get them all the tools they need to set up regular, boring lives like the rest of us. <laughs> I mean, admirable. But one retreat for the galaxies incarcerated? That's, uh, better be a big retreat. Do you believe something like that can actually work? I know it can work. Have the notation to prove it. We did an 18-month pilot program before we started setting up shop here. We're happy to now call two of the participants employees of this very facility. They just needed some help getting their footing. And once this place is open, we're going to expand on that success. Okay, so one is the shopkeeper outside. Who's the second? It can't be the uh, administrator. He said that he was the sole exception. Could it be the person we found in the infirmary? We could say a bunch of criminals getting their own little resort. Sounds like a waste of resources. Or we could say that's a pretty noble goal. Well, thank you. Always striving to make my presence in the universe a net positive. But still got a lot of ground to cover. But I'm sure you didn't come all this way just to listen to me blabber. You're probably exhausted. Monica should have any supplies you might need. She's just out front of the main building. And our ship services tech is out near the landing pad if your vessel needs some tending to. And if you need anything else, or just want to talk, you come find me. 
Okay, so the ship services technician is the second employee. What can you tell me about the Elias Retreat? Well, like I mentioned, the retreats are a modest attempt to change how the galaxy deals with those who find themselves on the wrong side of the law. Once we're open, the goal is to take in people whiling away in prison because they couldn't pay their bounties. We'll get them job training and a support network. All the tools they need to set up regular, boring old lives just like the rest of us. We're trying to do what we can to help those who need it. So what's your job here? Well, once we officially open our doors, the retreat's going to have to be a lot of things to the formerly incarcerated folks we plan to bring here. Residence, school, a place for reflection. Nevin, he handles everything infrastructure related, while I take care of everything our residents might need to get them moving along healthier paths. I make sure we've got the facilities to support everyone. I arrange all our occupational training. Even got my counseling certification a few years back so I can serve as a compassionate ear when people need it. So everyone here's got a checkered past, right? What did you do? If you can believe it, I was Crimson Fleet. Scouring the skies for loot and glory. Ended up finding a hefty prison sentence instead, which, honestly, was probably the best for me and the galaxy at large. What's wrong, love? Wow, just give me a second to look at my options here. Uh... Well, I expect that was a tough life. You'd expect right, even at the best of times. But I'm sure you didn't come here for an ancient history lesson. Was there something else you wanted to discuss? And again, we find an option that we've already chosen, not being correctly grayed out. So instead, we'll say, the missing person. I wanted to offer to help find them. That the truth? Because I can't say it's going to be easy work. But if you found the construction crew's missing man, we'd all owe you. It's not going to be easy, huh? Why is that? This planet is not the most accommodating to human life. Really? It's wild, empty, and the local fauna well, they're not big fans of humans. So while I will absolutely take your help if you're offering it, I just want you to be aware I don't expect it's going to be a walk in the park. What can you tell me about this construction worker? Well, he was last seen a few days ago, so we don't think he could have gotten far. We sent our lone security officer to find him, but things didn't go according to plan out there, and now he's taken up residence in our infirmary. So if you're offering... We'll absolutely take the help. Because I don't worry, I'll bring back your man. Or if the money is right, I'll bring you all the construction workers you can handle. <laughs> Let's go, I'll bring back your man. You don't know how happy I am to hear it. First things first. You want to speak to Greg D'Angelo, our security officer. He was wounded searching for our worker, Mr. Kilman's trail. He should be able to get you pointed toward Kilman's last known location. Okay. <laughs> that look of pain on his face. He's just like... Who are you? Can't a guy heal in peace? What happened to you? I got gored. Gored? I was out hunting for this dimwit construction worker when something comes charging out of the overgrowth and puts a horn or a claw or something in my gut. I never got a good look at it, but it must have been huge because it laid me out. It took me six hours of crawling to get back here. So unless you need something right now, I'd love to get back to closing up the hole in my torso. <laughs> he got gored? He's got a straight up hole in his torso? Okay, I was mocking him for his pained facial expressions, but if he got legit gored, he can have all the facial expressions he wants. <laughs> that sounds awful. Uh, or, right, uh, okay. Uh, Kilman, tell me where I can find him. 
Sloan found someone else, huh? Well, hopefully, ugh, you'll have better luck than I did. I managed to turn up some tracks outside the facility. Bit of a hike, though. Not sure if they were Kilmans, but Ixel's not exactly a bustling metropolis. There was a cave system I scanned nearby, but I got attacked before I could look any further. Next place I was planning to visit once I was on my feet again. I'd start there. Interesting that he got gored from behind which means he didn't see his attacker. He's assuming it was an animal with horns and tusks. I wonder if we'll find animals that have horns. Try not to get gored. I don't think there's room for two in here. Or tusks. But, uh, you know, a knife could have done the same thing. A sword, even. Harold J on Facebook says hello. Hello there, Harold. Good to see you, my friend. Jam and Cohen says, there isn't yet a mod that adds a search bar for the galaxy map, but the mod show star names seems to be the next next best thing. That would definitely help. I know I understand why they don't show all of the star names until you hover over them because that would be a whole lot of clutter in their otherwise really pretty uh, and minimalist star map. Uh, and yet it's kind of necessary for navigation, but more than that, there are, uh, the, the quests in the game, they only tell you which planet you need to go to, oftentimes, without telling you the system. And there are so many planets that don't share the names of their host systems. So that can sometimes make it difficult trying to fa find a, um, <clears throat> trying to find a planet. Especially if you want to revisit a quest location. Like when we did the, the quest, um, What was it? The one where we had to help the settlers on that barren planet? I wanted to go back and check them out and visit them, but I, I couldn't find it. I couldn't remember what planet it was on, and the quest log didn't help us either. What I want is I want like a journal or a log that tracks everything that I've discovered so far. I want every planet um, added to the log, and I want the major notes about what I'm so we've... bored, I can't get my eyes to focus. Unless something's wrong with the air in this place. I'd get out of here while you can. I would, if it wouldn't get me fired. All right, let's see if we can find this uh, ship technician guy. Because he also had a criminal past. Ah, ship services. Oh, uh, hi. We're not exactly open, but did you need something for your ship? Need some work done? Yeah, my ship needs some repairs. Sure thing. We'll get it fixed up. Good as new. Let me see what ships you have for sale. I'm sure you can find something you like. Wow, this place is selling ships? This little retreat is selling ships. Okay, we've got Dragonfire 2. Slipstream. Crossbow. Transpo. Thresher. Oh, that's a tiny little thing. Kind of cool. I actually really like the look of this one. Autobahn. And Wanderlust. Wow, oh, look at that. I, I like the look of that one too. Are these found uh, in other ship technicians or are they unique to this guy? Yeah, well, he didn't have much to say. Right, we need to pick up the trail. And let's see, we should probably browse our surroundings.
There's there is nothing on the horizon here. Nothing. What does your scanner reveal? But that and that. Those are the only only two things on the horizon. All right. Tell you what, I don't want to do this during the night. Greetings, Captain. Alright, it's uh, 2238. Let's sleep. Uh, 23. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I did that right. <laughs> Deuteronomist says, uh, too long, but sure. Uh, I wanted to sleep till 10 a.m. Did I do my math wrong there? Oh, it's cool. Last night was enlightening. <laughs> you I know, hope to you have a hell of an effect on people more. around here. Important yeah. or not, I'm ready to listen. Guys, were you watching me? Andrea and I were having a nap, and you guys just standing there watching? God, creepy. You have a hell of an effect on people, says Sam, after laughing. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Sam. All right. Let's uh, exit. All right. Pixel says, it is your space harem. Captain, oh, true, it is us. pleasant to see you. Okay. Come on, space harem. Let's go this way. Right, so this is a big old landing pad that they're currently constructing. Let's go off into the woods. Spitting pokeweed. Might as well scan as much of this planet as we can. A spirit laurel. What a cool looking plant. Oh, a sweet yellow creeper. <laughs> they gave me some sealant. Chlorine. The names of the, these plants are really funny. Sweet yellow creeper. Oh. We're getting all sorts of stuff. This is a dense, densely vegetated place. A crimson gibbet. Space Roach Filterer. Oh, a spiral bloom. Looks like it has eyes.
Okay, I'm getting I'm getting carried away here. I should be focusing on the quest. Oh my god. I got it. Where is it? Personal atmosphere. That is an interesting looking geological formation there. I guess I got that one already. For a planet with lots of dangerous fauna that's injuring workers, we certainly haven't uh, come across very many. All right, well, up we go. We could go either way. Pack glow hands. Come then. Meet your death. Glow hands? You see any tusks? Any big spikes? Another way through here. Unsure where it leads. All right, so the we need to go that way. So let's explore this way. Camilla says, "Hey, Ox, just finished watching your uh, Jedi Fallen Order and Survivor playthrough. Do you think you'll ever get back to the game?" Unfortunately, no. Um, I'm not about to play through everything that I've ever that I've already played through in Survivor, um, uh, because they corrupted my game save, and I'm still bitter about it. I'm pissed off. So no, I'm probably not going to play again. Oh wow, what have we got going on here? Lots of stuff. Creature pile. Oh, wow. Anything here worth taking? All right, dead end. Unless we go up here. going back. Stay away. Uh-oh. Quick save. Levent Kilman. Oh god, please, please don't put me back in the bag. I'll do whatever you say. Just please, not the bag. What? 
back in the bag? What are you talking about? What happened to you? What happened? You're... you're not here to... I... I was kidnapped. He got me off guard after hours, threw a bag over my head and marched me off. But I escaped. But then these creatures started hunting me. So I ran in here, and I've got no food, and I'm so hungry, and... Please, take me back. I just want to go home. Whoa, 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 whoa. He was kidnapped? Any chance you got a look at this kidnapper? No. No, he kept the bag over me the whole time. I heard his voice. But he honestly didn't say much when I was around. I'm just... I need this to be over. Please. Please, can we go? Please? Well, get your shoes on, pal. We're going to the retreat. Do not fear. Your trial is at an end. Oh, thank God. You don't know what that... Oh, come on. Let's... let's get out of here. You... You do know the way back, right? So he was kidnapped. You... you know where we're going, right? I'm so hungry. There's edible stuff on this planet, but I wouldn't recommend any of it. I think I must be hearing things. God, I hope I am. Once we're back, I'm going to sleep for a week. I think I must be hearing things. God, I hope I am. Well, I was hoping he would tell us more about who kidnapped him, put a bag over his head. But sadly, no. Colonel 87 says, I know you pick up Star Wars again if the deaths would reset your game exactly where it was. You know all your perks and all your choices. Maybe, but I would really only do it as if I could be guaranteed that the same thing wouldn't happen again. And I don't think I could. I don't want to have to have my game save uh, destroyed again. All right, so we've got a dead guy over there, which means we've come from there. So I think we need to go... Way, mineral caverns. Is this the exit? It seems local fauna has been nesting here. Okay, so wait a minute. The quest is having us go that way. But what's this? Why? Oh, to complete the survey? Okay, we came out on the other end of the mineral caverns. And the structures we see are these two structures out there. We either need to go over to get back to the Elos retreat or back in. Let's go back in, because there's monsters in there, and I think that'll help us complete the survey of the planet. It's really pretty. It's not often we get to explore a cave system like this in Starfield. Especially one as beautiful as this. You 
You know what we haven't found? We haven't found giant creatures with tusks. Hmm. Okay, now we're on the right side here. But you know what? He's not afraid of going back. If he was kidnapped, you'd think that he would be afraid of going back to the retreat. But he's not. Do you see anything useful? I got that one fully scanned. Spitting pokeweed. 88. All right, Spirit Laurel, 100% scanned. And I scanned all the resources. There we go, Spiral Bloom, 100% scanned. Yellow gibbet. Oh, sweet yellow crimson gibbet is what we're still working on. All right, everything is starting to look green around here. Noticed those turrets before. Holy shit, you found him. There's a face I never expected to see again. Killman! Killman's back! Mother of God, kid. What happened? I was walking out, and someone threw a bag over my head. They took me... I don't know. It smelled like the inside of the first aid kit. I had to sleep on a steel floor and... Which one of you crooks bagged him, huh? Us? Why the hell would we do that? Waste of a perfectly good bag. You're rambling, kid. Come on. <laughs> Let's get you cleaned up. You smell like used welder's gear. Mr. Halftown, I have some medical training. I'd be happy to... You stay away from me. I want whoever kidnapped my man found and dealt with, understand? I don't care if it's one of your people or mine or a fucking ghost. Find them. Of course. We'll do what we can. But... I'm not interested in excuses. I need to know who did this. Just find my man's kidnapper now. Interesting. Smelled like the inside of a medical kit. He was bagged and then brought to an infirmary. Why? Ah, uh, I, I guess it might have been a bit naive for me to hope for a happy reconciliation, but you brought him back safe. That's what's important. Here, you have my sincerest thanks. But now, we've got a whole new thread to pull on. What are the chances I'd be able to convince you to help us find our kidnapper? 
Greg Williams says, Hey, Ox, sorry I missed last week. Been under the weather with the worst head cold known to man. Uh, known to mankind. <clears throat> also, my therapist told me I have problems expressing my emotions. I can't say I'm surprised. Ah, Greg, thank you. It's good to have you back despite your head cold. You came at the best time. Well, uh, we could pass a persuasion check to ask for more money. We could say, they're good, I'll help you find them. Keep the credits coming, I'll do whatever you want. Or, I don't know, let me think about it. Well, let's see if we can get more money. Pass the persuasion check. Fine. I'm sure I can convince Nevin to trim some fat in the construction budget. Now, Mr. Kilman didn't seem to have a lot of information, but I caught at least one or two bits I think could help us find our kidnapper. Another persuasion check where we actually don't pass this persuasion challenge. All right, uh, be honest with me. Could someone from the retreat have done this? I want to believe none of them would. But I've been around long enough to know how easy it is for someone to surprise you. So honestly, I don't know. But I think those hints Kilman mentioned about the kidnapper's refuge are the key to figuring it out. We could say I wasn't really paying attention. We could say the place had metal floors. So it was a building, not some cave where they were keeping him. He mentioned a smell, something about a first aid kit. He did, didn't he? Industrial antiseptic would be my guess. I know that smell. There was a building we were evaluating as a possible site for the retreat not far from here. An old research outpost. Seems like a decent match for the description of our kidnapper's hideaway. Here, the facility's coordinates. Head out there and see what you can find. Okay. Heading back out. Find the kidnapper. It'll be interesting to learn what their motive was for kidnapping a construction worker. Yay, I get to scan more plants, yay. I'm not even mad. And that's one of the structures we found on our scan earlier. Gotta say, I uh, I actually really like this planet. I wouldn't say it's my favorite. You know what my favorite planet is so far? Um, Guinea, Guinea Boro? It's the landing. It's the planet in the Jemison system, the one that uh, Jessamine came from. That was a gorgeous planet. Really loved the way it looked. I forgot the name of it now. Goldman's Landing or something like that. But this one's really, I love these hills. These big sort of mounded uh, hills look really cool. Gagarin, Deuteronomist says. Yeah, Gagarin Landing. I know that my planet probably doesn't look the same as all of your planets, but my Gagarin is gorgeous. I really scanned everything? No, I've got three more. A hunting nightmare. A beetle crab grazer. We've got big claws, big antennae. You see any big tusks? We 
Greg Williams says, can we see how you're decorating your player homes? Also, my girlfriend keeps saying, I'm cheating on her. She's starting to sound like my wife. Play on, sir. Oh, an adultery joke. Those are always just classic. Love a good adultery joke. Thank you for that one, Greg. I, uh, I'm actually not decorating my player homes at all. I've done absolutely everything on stream. There hasn't been a moment, except for when I'm uh, recording pickup footage, that I haven't been on camera. So I haven't done any decorating at all. And uh, honestly, I'm not enthused. I'm not exactly enthused to do a bunch of uh, decorating. Um, I can't exactly explain why. I just don't, don't really have the motivation for it. And I think it has more to do with uh, the plot than anything. As much as I love the plot, there's nothing in the plot that really encourages me to build settlements. Unlike the plot of... Um, Fallout 4. All right, we've got some structures over here. But neither of them are our quest destination. Well, someone has tried building something. those are. Those geologic formations over there look really interesting. Here we go. Abandoned outpost. Paying more attention. I'm glad they give me a warning. You'd think if someone was to plant landmines that the landmines should go off immediately, but no. They give me a three second delay. Abandoned outpost. Sarah says, but can we see your Valheim base? Maybe one day. Uh, so she knows that um, I've been playing Valheim in my free time. It's uh, a game that I play to wind down. There are a couple of games like that. Building games. I really enjoy sort of just uh, building games like Satisfactory, Conan Exiles, and Valheim. Uh, that I'll play every now and then in my downtime when I don't have any lore to do, don't have any work to do, the kids are away from the house, and I have some free time to myself. Those are the kind of games that I play in my free time. And I had an, an, an enormous amount of a joy building in Valheim. I think that's one of the best building games I've played in a long time. I heard something. <laughs> Yay, 
Yeah, maybe one of these days I'll show it to you. Maybe during my charity live streams later this year. I am taking damage. Warning, damage registered. I catastrophic damage. I'm guessing, uh, wait a minute, I've been here before. I've been here before, this is the exact same layout. I think I've been here many different times before. Ah, oh, I hate it when they do that. Uh, so they recycled the exact same layout as uh, a number of other dungeons. The fighting may have ended, but many hearts are still waging war. Whatever that means. All right, let's check this out. Oh dear. Expert lock, let's see. None, all, top only. Okay, well, that makes it easy. Right, none, all, none, top only. None, okay, all. Wow. Oh, dear. I messed it up. I messed it up. Because I should have waited. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. Because I got to use all three for the final. <laughs> I hope you can succeed at that before we are discovered. Advanced double A, advanced solstice, combat knives. Storage checklist. It's the exact same slate. From Susan Williams, chief of security. The exact same person. See, it's stuff like that. I mean, it would be one thing if it was just a recycled layout. I mean, that's bad enough. Because what's the likelihood that you're going to find a base that has the exact same layout on a completely different planet in a different system across the galaxy? But it's not just the exact same layout. It's the exact same lore with the exact same names of people as staff who worked at this place. Susan Williams, right? Terrifying.
Menu for the week, you got this. Ellie Ramos, same chef, same name. Well, I mean, if it's the exact same location, I don't really want to explore the whole thing again. We already know it's gonna, we already know what the lore is gonna be, so let's just go to the quest marker. Caden Shade says, what would you want the first big DLC for this to be? I want to learn more about the uh, Varun Zealots. I want to go to House Varun Space. See what their systems look like, their planets, their society. And the only reason I want that is because they didn't cover any of that in the game. House Varun is one of the three major factions in the game and they're not even present in the base game. So clearly they're going to be a major part of an upcoming DLC. Your abilities are... I think I even covered this place in a lore video, didn't I? Beacon DVD attempting to evade my sensors. I am initiating a search pattern. I am engaging <laughs> a hostile target. Total system failure. Oh yeah, I remember this one. It was filled with ecliptic mercenaries, and there was a guy down there that had an insta-kill gun. Remember? And I kept dying over and over. Search the kidnappers' quarters. Greg Williams says, can we get a quick peek at your abilities? What, why, was everything floating just now? Uh, yeah, so I used my gravity, anti-grav field power. And this is uh, actually the very first power that we get. It's the most utilitarian in combat. It, it's really the most effective. But yeah, these are my other powers. Eternal Harvest, Grav Dash. I mean, many of the other combat powers are situationally useful, but uh, nothing really compares to anti-gravity field because it's got a huge radius. It affects every creature and enemy. You don't have to target any of them. It essentially incapacitates them for a good solid 10 seconds, allowing you to just run around and kill everyone. It's such an OP power that everything else, gravity wave, grav dash, it doesn't really compare. Phase time looks interesting. I haven't really used phase time much, have I? Let's try that out. Mm. 
Modified, refined Big Bang. <clears throat> um, I have one Big Bang, but it's, um... It's a particle beam shotgun. Yeah, I'll try it again. Return the, return the slate to the retreat. Corrupted slate. Ash. Sam, something. All right, so we're going to have to get that translated or something. Cornered, boosted, advanced lawgiver. All right, middle, all, none, all, 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 bottom, middle, top. Middle. Let's see, can I get away with using the middle without using one of those? I could use that. Could I? Yeah. I could use that there. But then I don't have another one. So I'd have to use one of those anyway. So we might as well use that. And then that. And then for the bottom, we can put that there. And put that there. How quickly can you get that done? Refined ground crude spacesuit. Rattler. Ah, another safe. God. I'm not going to pick it again. That's it. Art Pixel says, may I recommend the Hornet Nest mod for one of your guns? It's quite entertaining. Also, don't forget to look for the drilling rig in the frozen biomes. Yeah, yeah, I still need to do that. Still need to find a drilling rig in a frozen biome. Maybe I'll do that after this. I'm not exactly sure where I would go for a good frozen biome. In the back of my mind, I have this memory of a planet that begins with the letter I that was a frozen planet. Might be a good candidate for finding a, a, um, a frozen biome, but I don't really recall. All right, let's get out of here. We already explored this multiple times, so uh, we'll just go. So we had to come here for a slate. We've got the slate. Once we get it uh, deciphered, hello. I wonder who it will target or implicate. Christina Sierra says, what episode did he find Juno? I forget. It was several weeks ago. Um, gosh, three or four weeks ago. I forget which episode it was, but I really want to get the random encounter. I still haven't gotten the random encounter where we find Juno again. And it's hard for me to finish telling the story until I get that. Going 
back to the infirmary? Yeah. Monica Bloom, she was the traitor. Nevin Bowen, the administrator. And she's the counselor. You seem to have weathered that trek well enough. Were you able to find anything at the facility? No sign of the kidnapper, but I did find this. Hmm. Not a lot to go on. Monica, anything you can do with this? I can take a look. Oh, it's encoded. Made to look scrambled. And done badly. Looks like... There. Seems there were two of them. Oh my god. It's all here. The accidents, the kidnapping... Greg's attack. These two, they did it all. Any mention of who they are? They're not with the construction crew, are they? Mm, no names, but there are a pair of ID numbers. They're with the Tracker's Alliance. The Alliance sent two bounty hunters? Here? But our bounties are all paid. I'm not seeing an Alliance contract or documentation. I think this is off the books. Trackers? Consider yourselves lucky to still be alive. It appears we have been fortunate. But it does beg the question. So, a couple of trackers have decided to haunt us on their own free time. Why? Doesn't say. Well, I mean, it's, it can't be money. If the bounties have been paid, then they're not going to be getting anything for their efforts. So it has to be... Revenge? Justice? Well, um, we already know the answer to this, but for everyone who doesn't, what's the Tracker's Alliance? It's the official guild of the galaxy's bounty hunters, known for relentlessly stalking their targets in pursuit of a payday. To a Tracker, any person with an outstanding record is a coin purse, ready to be cut open and emptied of value. Regardless of the circumstances surrounding said person's record, there are few groups more ruthless. Though, it's surprising that they've intervened here, where there's no obvious money to be made. Yeah. Will Gardner says, Hi Ox, love your content. A DLC focusing on the schism, or the schism, between the regular Varun people and the Varun zealots would be cool. Yeah, that would be really neat. How the heck do you know how to decode that slate, Monica? It's really not that impressive. I used to sell these on the semi-regular in my old life. A cheating spouse wants to document all their flings without fear of their partner finding out? Just use one of these bad boys. It's computer hacker 101 stuff. And it sure doesn't explain why they've decided to harass us. Hmm. We could say who cares why. Or we could uh, speculate and say maybe they've got a vendetta against someone here. Hard to see why else they'd bother. That certainly seems in the realm of possibility. So then this is an easy fix. They're bounty hunters. We pay them to leave us alone. And make ourselves a target for every other hunter in the universe. We need to take a stand. Says the one guy physically incapable of taking one. We're not doing anything until we actually find them. Any mention in there of where our trackers might be now? Mm, sounds like they're on a supply run, outside the system. Then we got a little time. Given their background, and ours, I expect you're the only person here they might actually listen to. Would you be willing to act as an emissary on our behalf? So these Tracker Alliance bounty hunters set up a base on a... on a station here on this planet to attack these guys, but then they went off to do another mission in the meantime? Seems a little odd. Um, we could say I need to think about it, or I don't know. Can you tell me mo any more about who these two might be? Slate's not big on details. There's two of them, they're clearly armed, but that's about all we've got to go on. But trackers aren't usually the type to take prisoners when it's not required. So the fact that they've thus far remained largely non-violent, well, it means they might be willing to negotiate. 
with the right person, of course, which I think in this case is you. Yeah, the fact that they didn't just kill this one guy they kidnapped is a good sign, but it, it could also be that they got the wrong person. Also, the person that they got didn't have a criminal record. The person they kidnapped was one of the workers. So, they probably got the wrong person. We could say, don't you worry, they're never going to bother you guys ever again, or as long as you don't expect me to kill them, then yes, I'll do it. Let's try that. I'm certain we can find a way to solve this without resorting to violence. Let's just pay them and be done with it. I mean, we clearly need more manpower anyway. I'll hire them on as contractors. To hell with that. We know where they live. Let's have our friend here get the drop on him and send him to the great beyond. The last thing we need is the galaxy thinking that's how we solve our problems around here, Mr. D'Angelo. I would request you try to avoid any violence. But if you're looking for suggestions on how to proceed, well, it seems we've got opinions to spare. Okay, well, lots of different uh, opinions here. Let's do a hard save, as we haven't done one. Optional task, ask the staff how to deal with the trackers. Well, you've certainly been clear about how you want them dealt with. Are you looking for my suggestion? I don't think they're gonna respect anything other than force. But I think Sloane's not going to be happy if you handle it that way. What's up? You want to talk negotiation strategies? I'll help as best I can. Any suggestions on how to deal with these trackers? Had to deal with my fair share of their kind over the years. You don't get into that job to make it rich. You get into it to be your own boss and prove how tough you are. So, my advice? Let them know that pushing around a bunch of counselors just makes them look like bullies, not tough. Okay. Be careful with those goons. I think there's a clear way to solve this problem. But the ultimate way forward, I suppose, falls to you. I think you should offer them money. And I'm willing to help. Here, all I have liquid at the moment. Hopefully it'll be enough. Cool, I didn't even have to make any promises. Can we do this again? I'd hand them those credits I gave you. I'm hoping that much will be sufficient. Okay. Take care, please. I would hate for anyone else to get hurt in all this. So please, try to solve things peacefully. Craig Strenthen became a gold ox on YouTube. Thank you so much, Craig Strenthen. Love. I can only guess at what these two might be after. But it's clear they perceive something about us as a threat. They're afraid. And all you can do with fear is try and understand it. So, just listen to them, okay? Hear what they have to say. And see if you can make whatever it is they're worried about a little less scary. Good luck out there. Right, we have heard everybody's opinions. We are fully armed with options. Let's go find them. I wonder where that's gonna send us. We're going back to the base? Confront the trackers. Oh, okay, I guess they're back from their uh, supply run. Bear on YouTube says, Hey Ox, how are you enjoying Baldur's Gate? I'm... <laughs> I'm conflicted on Baldur's Gate. On one hand, uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying all of the characters. They're hilarious. They're interesting. Uh, the gameplay is confusing and at times bewildering and sometimes tedious. Um, I think it may just be due to my inexperience with Dungeons and Dragons in general and uh, extremely detail detailed and intricate games like this. Um, I think the world is fascinating and, and a delight to explore. So uh, I'm struggling with it, and yet at the same time, I'm enjoying the struggle. 
if that makes sense. Well, these guys are gonna see that somebody just came through and blew through their entire base. Perhaps that's gonna make them more inclined to negotiate with us. What? We just gotta sit here and wait? Well, that's so weird. All right. What the? Who's that? No clue. You. Who are you and what the hell are you doing here? Okay, confront the trackers. And just who the holy hell are you? We could attack the last person you're ever gonna see. Or we can say I'm here on behalf of the Elios Retreat. I wanna talk. See, I told you Kilman was gonna lead them to us. Should have slit his throat when we had the chance. Quiet. Listen, unless you're here to tell us those convicts have decided to close up shop, then we've got nothing to discuss. Why do you care? Are you really afraid of a couple of ex-cons? I couldn't care less about the cons. They can huff fish innards until they rot for all we care. But this retreat, if they actually succeed, keep criminals out of the bounty system, well... Uh... The galaxy probably doesn't need so many trackers at that point, does it? Oh, really? And then maybe the big boys like the UC and the Collective set up programs of their own, just like Elios. Put us all out of a job. Wow. Now, better to nip it in the bud now before it becomes a threat. Which is why I'm not interested in discussing anything except the date and time they're shutting their doors. That's it. They're doing this because of business. The retreat is bad for their business. That's hilarious. How much is it gonna cost you to leave the retreat alone? More than you can offer. Only way this stops is if that place closes up for good. All right, again, we could attack. We could pay 20,000 credits. You underestimate me. I'll pay 20,000 credits if you never bother the retreat again. Or we can pass a persuade check to say, please, we can solve this without anyone getting hurt. It is a reasonable request. You would do well to consider it. That's so. Okay, this is a somewhat difficult one. We've got to pass six points of persuasion, and yet we've got plenty of options. You must think you're real tough, picking on a bunch of unarmed office workers and counselors. What? That's... that's not what this is. We're tough. <laughs> no, we're, we're tough. Even if the retreat succeeds, there's always work for savvy, capable people like you two. I... I guess that's a good point. <sighs> Fine. We'll leave the retreat alone. Can't make any promises about us being the last, though. Just get out, all right? All right. No violence. Which is exactly what the counselor wanted. Piss off. Need to figure out where the hell we're going next. Should have just killed them all and been done with it. And there we go. 
get out of here. Yes, what? There you are. You were gone for quite a while, love. Are you all right? Were you able to find our trackers? No, I wasn't. That was really quick. Okay, sure did. And I convinced them to leave you all alone. Or less said the better, but it's taken care of. You may begin heaping praise upon me, whatever you like. Your tracker problem is no more. <laughs> all right, uh, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Let's do this one. That's... That's the best news I've had in quite a while. From the bottom of my heart, thank you, love. Mm. This place, all of us, we are in your debt. There is just one last piece of business, though. Nevin asked to speak to you, in private. He's waiting for you up in the office. All right, the business guy, the administrator, wants to speak with me. Probably gonna offer me a job. I don't think I really want to spend too much more time here. Look at all of these scrapes on these brand new walls. What exactly did they drag up this, this staircase? Well, I'm back, and I didn't have to use the money you gave me, so I'm just gonna keep it. Ah, there you are. So, first things first, I need to say, well, thank you. Your credits are thanks enough. Or let's jump to the explaining what you want part. Or, glad I could be of service. And we are exceedingly grateful for it. It's just, the situation you set right, with the trackers, it's one we don't want to find ourselves in again. Luckily, we have someone, our founding donor in fact, who has offered to reach out to the Alliance, ensure their good behavior going forward. Before she does, however, she's asked for the details of what exactly occurred. I've already shared my own insights, but... Well, she wants to talk to you, too. Is that something you might be amenable to? Yeah, I gotta say, I'm curious to see exactly who's footing the bill for this entire enterprise. Who exactly am I going to be speaking to? Should I be concerned here? Our benefactor has said she'd prefer to do the introductions herself. But you can rest assured she wants only to thank you in person. Hear your side of the story. Nothing more sinister than that. I think I'd be rather on my way. Or if that's all you need, sure, I can talk to her. Ah, she'll be pleased to hear it. Head to Aquila City in the Cheyenne system. Check in with Justin Sneed, her security chief. And I would ask you to try and be polite. She's the only reason we're here. Well, this place is uh, founded by someone in the Freestar Collective. Sneed. Why do I feel like we've heard that name before, Sneed? <clears throat> but that's just the uh, secretary. Could it be one of the governors? Well, we've got a quest we need to turn in at Aquila City anyway, for the Tracker's Alliance. So, this is great. 
They're not just gonna have us sit here, right? They've gotta scrap the job, right? No, I solved your problem. The job is still a go. Why hasn't your dialogue updated? Captain, hello. I am... Whew. Always a satisfying moment to return to your ship. Okay. Oh, we've got a scanner anomaly here. Crap. I should take care of it while I'm here. Acquire the power on Ixil 2. Let's do it. I don't want to have to come back. That's a pretty ship. Landing site locked. Take us in. I don't see a big thing off in the distance. Unless that's it. Temple Psy. There's a ton of resources on this planet. Okay, uh, how are we gonna get into Temple Psy?
always the last one. Done. What uh what did we get? Uh phase ten uh, was uh Elemental Pole? Elements, the true treasure of a planet, no, we got that. Well, maybe it was the uh, elemental pole. The true treasure of a planet and moon are drawn to your being. Okay. Let's find some elements and see if that, see exactly how it works. Do I need to be by elements or can it be done anywhere? All right, well, here's a big vein of uh, chlorosilines. Let's try it. No. Here we go. Copper. Okay. Interesting, interesting power. Useful in some situations. Okay, uh, back to the ship. Right, Aquila City. All right, I have a side quest I need to turn in here at Ship Services. Let's go take care of that. Got anything you need to offload? Trade Authority is always buying. Kiosk, anything I can help you with? I have an urgent parcel for delivery for you. About you the courier? Now? I've been expecting you. Star Parcel has your payment right here. Anything else you need? All right, we got 11,500 credits. That's great. Uh, that's it. Okay, let's go meet this lady. You're in the Vanguard, right? Hey, thanks for your service. Towers closed. Come back some other time. Hmm. 
I don't have time for this. Nevin sent me, and I'll step aside. Oh, you're expecting me. The savior of Ilios Retreat has arrived. <laughs> what is with all these grandiose options that we've got? <laughs> I was told to check in with you. I'm Oxhorn. I'm the one who helped out the Ilios Retreat. Hmm. You're them, huh? I've got two rules for this little meeting. Rule number one. You're not to share anything you discuss up there. This is a private matter, and we're going to keep it that way. Okay. Rule two. You decide to get playful with that weapon, we're going to have serious problems. Think you can abide by those? Super Taram says, try using elemental pull on blue Kiliumite in artifact caves. One pull should grab all of it in one go. The power is most useful from mining caves. Yeah, I can see how that would be. Thank you for that one, Super Taram. We could say, I don't take orders from you, pal. Or let's just say, sure, and see how things go. <laughs> so snarky. Or yeah, yeah, I can handle that. Good. Miss Lance is waiting upstairs. You can go on up. Miss Lance, speak to the donor. Well, and here that I must am. make you our guest. Please, take a seat. I can take a seat. Now, but, uh, you may already know who I am. Raisha Lance, CEO Laredo Firearms. And you I know all about. I can't thank you enough for everything you've done for the retreat. Truly, it's a project that's near and dear to my heart. Laredo Firearms. Huh. A firearms manufacturer trying to rehabilitate criminals. Very interesting. Okay. You're the person responsible for the retreat? The CEO of a weapons manufacturer? I'm not the sole donor, but yes, the retreat is a project I've been trying to foster for some time now. My attempt to improve the plight of humanity, even if just in a minor way. Which is why I'm so thankful for your intervention on its behalf. I'm not a, fa a big fan of small talk. Let's get to it, or you're quite welcome. Now, I presume Nevin already got you up to speed. I need details before I talk to the heads of the Trackers Alliance. Make sure their members understand the retreat's off-limits. So if you don't mind, I'd like to just jump right into it. Lily here will be taking notes as we go. Now, Nevin said all the various incidents afflicting the retreat, they all stemmed from this pair of rogue bounty hunters. Do I have that right? What sort of other incidents are you talking about? There were a streak of thefts and accidents leading up to Mr. Kilman's kidnapping. We presumed they were just bad luck or local fauna. Excel's not exactly the most hospitable of worlds, but Nevin made it sound as if those bounty hunters might have been responsible for it all. And I was hoping you could confirm if that was the case or not. Uh, well, we've got two options here. We could say yes, or we can say all I can confirm is that they were involved in the kidnapping. The rest I wasn't present for, which is the truth. Ah, I'll be sure that's noted. But you did manage to get those two to leave the retreat alone. You mind my asking how you accomplished that? Persuasion. I expect heavily into persuasion. <clears throat> well, we could say if it's all the same to you, I'd rather not talk about it. Or they were dolts. I had them wrapped around my little finger before I barely opened my mouth. Or I just talked with them. I got them to see reason. Two trackers and you just talked them down? That's quite the feat. I'm interested in the details, though. How exactly did it all play out? I'd prefer not to reveal my oratorical secrets. <laughs> oh, it was a tough back and forth, but I managed to get them to see things our way. Or I'm an expert negotiator. Those two are lucky I didn't talk them into flying themselves into a star. <laughs> uh, it was not a tough back and forth, so I guess we'll, we'll choose the first one. I bet they are. So, only other thing I wanted to ask... And I'm just looking for an opinion here. Is there anything in your eyes that could have been done to prevent this happening? I mean... 
It's just a, a bonkers, out-of-left-field thing that could have happened. Who could have guessed that the Tracker's Alliance, a guild of bounty hunters, would attack a remote retreat still under construction on a far distant world? Uh, the retreat's woefully underprotected. You need more security. Your leadership needs guidance. Sloan and Nevin really dropped the ball here. I think you're on the right course now. Well, her current course is to try and talk to the Tracker's Alliance to prevent this from happening again. And I think that's wise. Having a bunch of criminals running around a place like that is only Something going to wrong? end in tragedy. I didn't offend you, did I? Uh, I don't really think this last one applies. If they had more security... If they had more security, uh, it's possible that they could have intercepted the trackers, the bounty hunters, and put a stop to them, but that would have ended in a, a firefight. And people would have died. And we managed to get through it without anyone dying. Still, it's not bad to have more security. After everything I've heard from you and Nevin, I'm inclined to agree. It'll take time to get the right people in place for this kind of work, but I'll make sure it's addressed. But that should give me enough to present to the Alliance. Thank you for making the time. Now, what you did, well, it deserves something more than just a couple of firm thank yous. Here, I want you to have these. They're a rare make, but I think you've earned it. Now. Hey. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about before we went our separate ways? Legendary stuff. Okay, my dogs are barking. I gotta go check on that real quick. I'll be right back. Oh, now it looks like this is the portion of the quest where we get to tell her exactly what we think about her entire Take adventure. Take your time. What made you want to get involved in the retreat in the first place? It's something that's been on my mind for a while now. How best to help the galaxy's incarcerated population? Humanity's tried plenty of bad ideas. Throwing them in jail and forgetting about them. The UC gave that a go way back when. Took all their criminals to a penal colony on Suvorov and left them to their own devices. Yeah, we know how that well, turned out. Those folks didn't appreciate that sort of treatment. Took over the colony. And now we call them the Crimson Fleet. Next, we tried making them pay fines instead of going to jail. Except if you don't have the money, that's no sort of improvement at all, is it? Bad idea after bad idea. I thought it was time we tried something new. That's where the plans for the retreat came from. Our attempt at doing things different. How are you going to get the Tracker's Alliance to play a ball? You make lots of friends in my position. Friends in the Free Star Collective. Friends in the UC. The sort of people with influence over things. Like, say, how much a locality is allowed to spend on Alliance contracts each quarter. When the Alliance heads grasp that it's better for us all to be friends, I expect they'll leave the retreat well enough alone. All right, three options. Uh, nothing else I was looking to discuss. Or I think you're wasting your money on the retreat. Or I think you're going to do real good with the retreat. Um, I don't think it's hurting anyone. In fact, I'm going to be optimistic and say that I think the retreat might be able to do some real good. Is it going to be revolutionary? Is it going to revolutionize crime in the settled systems? Probably not. But will it do some real good for a few people? Probably. So I'll say you're going to do some real good. That's kind of you. 
But without your help, it might have stayed just a goal. You have my sincere thanks. Now if you'll excuse me, as you've seen, there's plenty to be done. And we get an additional 5,000 credits you keep everything on the time. level and we'll get along grand. All right. Activity, check in with the Elias Retreat staff. We need to go back. Let's see, what did we get? We got a Hauler's Advanced Peacemaker spacesuit. Worse physical damage resistance, worse energy, worse EM, better airborne, better radiation. Three legendary effects, Peacemaker, rifles do 10% more damage, Technician, 15% damage from robot enemies, Resource Hauler, resources weigh 25% less, less, and the Peacemaker, an epic rifle, very nice, 147 damage, I like it a lot. Long barrel, laser sight, rapid reload, 25% increase in attack speed. That's perfect for this kind of weapon. Demoralizing, that's all right. Okay, the power pack is better. Power boost pack. All right. The helmet, not so much. The spacesuit, not so much. Because I already have this one. 137, 121, 169, 125, 153, 129. Beast Hunter, Auto Medic, and Incendiary. Yeah. What I've got is already better. PC Jack says, Loving the streams. Returnal for a live stream? Oh, uh, maybe. I, I definitely take uh, viewer recommendations into consideration. Returnal. That's the first. I haven't heard that. I uh, had that one recommended. I'll have to check it out. Uh, I don't know. Howdy. Well, either way, you can't... Now, Chad is saying that I should check out the Co Museum and finally sell that book. Let's see. That's currently aboard the Kepler, isn't it? Let's see if I can find it. Uh, cargo hold. Where would it be? Is it in miscellaneous or notes? What? What's that doing? Oh dear God, I got a lot of notes. Uh, trying to find the one about Co. God, I've collected a lot. Hope Family Tree. Now that's about Ron Hope, not about Sam Coe. I may not have what I thought I had. I don't think I did. Von Rex says the book is a quest item. It should be locked to you. 
Well, in that case, it's on my inventory. So let's see if we can find this museum that we've heard so much about. I think I remember passing it over in this quarter of the uh, town at one point. There it is, the Co Heritage Museum. I have artifacts that date all the way back to the time of Solomon Co himself. Who's talking to me? Leah Kasler. Everything you see here is a piece of Aquila City's history. How's the museum going? Very well. People are proud of their history here, so we get more visitors than I was expecting. So it gets pretty busy here, especially with school field trips. Gods of War, with a super chat, and this is Gods of War, uh, War's first super chat. In your last lore video, you missed something. After talking with crew members, if you talk to them again in a week, they have more dialogue. Like Jessamine says that the House Varun is no longer after her. Is that true? Wow. Well, I did miss that, if that's the case. Thank you very much, Gods of War. I'll uh, check that out. Well, we can say I'd like to learn about Aquila City's history. Aquila City was founded over 150 years ago by Solomon Co, a scientist and explorer from Earth. Along with other settlers, Co built the structures you see in the part of the city we call the core. Those proud buildings still stand today. The planet was dangerous, so they built a wall around their settlement. Eventually, they ran out of space and started building outside the wall. Tell me what happened after that. There were so many buildings that they had to build another, larger wall, forming a second outer ring around the growing city. Of course, the city didn't stop growing, and before long, the third wall, the outer wall you see today, was constructed. Today, Aquila City is the proud capital of the Free Star Collective, and the Council of Governors continues to meet here when they need to. Tell me about Solomon Co. Most people know Solomon Co. as the founder of Aquila City and the father of the Freestar Collective. He was an astrophysicist who lived on Earth in a place called Wyoming. Solomon was born around the time people first started living in space. Later in life, he designed starships, and when Earth was in peril, those ships helped to save humanity by taking them to new homes in the stars. All right, it's all starting to make sense now. He's from Wyoming. Thus, the cowboy theme of Aquila City. Got you. Sounds like Solomon was a big deal, or I find stories of the early pioneers fascinating. The bravery and heroism it took to save humanity. Whew, goosebumps. <laughs> During the Great Exodus, Solomon came to this world. He named our star Cheyenne, which was also a place on Earth, and gave Aquila its name too. He and some others built the settlement that would go on to become Aquila City, and his descendants still live here today. You know, when I was in high school, there was a girl in my class named Cheyenne, but uh, her mom spelled it Cheyenne, S-H-Y-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, Cheyenne. That, that, was, that was her name, yeah. So that's, uh, that was my first introduction to the name Cheyenne. Project Journeyman says, is the book on the ship? Uh, apparently not. I think I may have it in my inventory. We could say I travel a lot. I can keep my eyes open for things for Just your taking it in? Ugh, the history. There are some things I would kill to have. I mean, wait, <laughs> not literally. But I would pay a lot for. You see, the Co family lost a treasure trove of old historic documents ages ago. And those documents would be priceless to have here. What sort of documents are you looking for? Well, all of them were owned by our city's founder, Solomon Co. He's more than that, really. He's one of the greatest heroes of the settled systems. These documents would be, like I said, priceless to the museum and to our guests. Depending on how much a lot is, I'm interested, or I can see why you'd want them in your museum. Their absence pains me. Jacob Co. and I have talked at length, and his great-grandfather was a troubled man. He sold off various historic documents to cover debts. They could be anywhere. 
If you find any of that trove of documents, I will pay dearly for it. Okay. So, uh, search randomly through the settled systems. This is hopeless. Or I'm not gonna make any promises, or I'll keep my eyes open for them. Thank you. Think of the future generations that could benefit from seeing such important history. Okay, well, we've got three items, I guess, now, and that updated our activities. We can say, I have found something for your museum. Let me see. Magnificent. These are Solomon's calculations that he used to do his first solo grav jump here. The data he gathered himself from his telescope in Wyoming. On Earth. Priceless. Hmm. Oh, I know what this is. This is Solomon's manifest from his first trip to Cheyenne. Every single thing he thought he might need. Wow. Oh, dear Lord. It's real. It, it still exists. This is the original charter for Aquila City. And you can see their signatures. This is really the birth of the Free Star Collective. The core philosophy of limited government and inalienable rights. All here. Thank you. If you find anything else, please come back. All right, we just got a bunch of cash. Now this, I believe, uh, is related to a quest we picked up at, at uh, New Atlantis. I'd like to talk to you about a tree branch. That is not something I expected to hear today. I assume you're somehow associated with the United Colonies. I've received some odd messages of late. Uh, what sort of messages have you received? Several that bordered on being incomprehensible. Honestly, I thought it was some kind of strange prank until now. A bunch of gibberish about dire consequences and frequency modulation and genetic reconstruction. It all came across as rather unhinged. <laughs> well, I'm afraid you've wasted your time because I'm not authorized nor particularly inclined to release any of our pieces. That includes hundred-year-old tree branches. That's right. Sorry, but it's staying in storage. Convince Leah to hand over the branch or steal the branch from the museum. Uh, right, so this goes back to the quest where we have to find the mate for the tree on New Atlantis. Otherwise, it's gonna keep reverberating. Hi. Please and feel free to have a look around. It's tear the down reason all I started of New this Atlantis. place. All right, I will look around. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna steal it. I'm gonna use my persuasion. But uh, let's go take a look at it first. Free Star Ranger badges, a sextant. Solomon Coe's Cheyenne Trip Inventory. I can steal, I, I just wanna read it without stealing it. Can I read it without stealing it? Oh, I see, Th those are the things that I sold. All right, so we've got one, two, Two more things that we need to find, it looks like. Where's the branch? Where's the tree branch? Yeah, that's the original Aquila City Charter. Okay, I don't even see the tree branch. Did I miss it? Well, let's try and barter with her. Welcome to the Co Heritage Museum. I offer a brief tour and I'm happy to discuss the city's history as well. If you find any more of the Co family's legacy, please let me know. I really need that tree branch. I hear what you're saying, but I'm afraid it's out of the question. All right, this is only a four. Come on, this isn't that important to anybody but me. That's probably true. I can't believe I'm doing this. Please return it in one piece. Ancient branch added. All right, we can deliver the branch to Kelton Frush. Might as well complete that quest since we uh, begin it. Let's take a look at it in our inventory. Ancient branch, yeah, there it is. Right, back to the ship. <laughs> A 
any adventure you can fly away. Uh, now... We... Need to go back. Because we had, uh... A quest update to go back to Ixil. And check in with them. So let's tackle that while we're here. Or while we're thinking about it, I should say. And then we'll go to New Atlantis. Yeah, check in with the Elos, Elios Retreat staff. Jared Shover on Facebook says, Ox, you can visit the House Varun home system. It's called the Serpent's System. Is it really? Oh, that's, uh, that's great. I didn't realize that they had included it in the base game because we don't have any quests that bring us there. So yeah, maybe I'll stumble upon it. Well, let's see, did we check in with her? Welcome back. Still just the basics on offer, but I'm happy to show you what I've got. Back from wandering the farthest reaches of space. <laughs> You're always welcome to resupply here. Catch you later. Nope, nothing. Let's talk to the administrator. Oh, welcome back. Feel so. Better? Because of this little episode with the trackers, Nevins agreed to let me hire my own security team. Heavens know we need it. This place is going to be something special someday. All right, he's happy at last. Hey, buddy. Hey. Oof. I expected this job would be hazardous, but not like this. You feeling better? Sure hope this place ends up being worth it. Yeah, me too. So this is what progress feels like. Oh, until next time then. Sorry to wake you up. Oh, there she is. Just happening through our neck of the woods, stranger? Nevin told me about your summons. Our uh, donor wasn't too hard on you, I hope. Hard on me? <laughs> Not really. Uh, why so much secrecy about this donor? It's something she had asked for. She doesn't want her firm's reputation and ours to affect one another. But I'm mostly just curious how things went. We could lie and say, oh, we're best friends now. We'll be taking her mega yacht for a spin once it's in season. It was just a nice change of pace to be able to help you all without anyone threatening my life. Or she's a surprisingly friendly person, considering her line of work. She can be a hammer when the situation requires, but this project holds a pretty special place in her heart, so I'm sure she was feeling grateful. Well, thanks to your little chat, our donor's doing everything she can to upend the various roadblocks in our way. We're in the process of vetting more security, looking at some additional and more agreeable contractors. Whatever gets this place closer to becoming a reality, opening still a ways off, but we'd be going nowhere if you hadn't wandered in. How long to do you think? How long to do you think? It's going to be, wow, this sentence is just a butchery. How long to do you think it's going to be before you can open? It's hard to say for certain. We're only just now in a place where we can actually assess how long everything's going to take. But with time, we'll get there. And that's thanks to you. So my master plan to get you shut down fails spectacularly. Ah, uh, well, or I'm just happy I could help. That makes two of us. Thank you again, love. You For you, our love. doors will always be open. 
Well, I'm glad she's grateful. And that completes our activity. That little present is wrapped up with a nice bow. Now, back to New Atlantis <clears throat> so that we can uh, finish this whole tree side plot. I really hope this tree doesn't uh, ruin New Atlantis. God, it's such a huge shit. <laughs> Good day, Captain. I find the interior of this ship comforting. Change the, the punk says, got another Christmas idea. Holly jolly oxen free. Maybe, maybe that would work. Oh, I'm not going to find this tree guy. Unless I tag the activity. Let's try uh, asteroid, Abe, Red Mile, Joyce, Copper, Percival. Who was it? What was his name? It updated just a moment ago. Well, for Pete's sake. Sergeant Yumi, Abe, Joyce. I don't, I don't know who all these people are. Is it Kellen? Catherine, Layla, Yumi. Show all targets. Oh. Well, that's not going to help. That's going to take me to Mast. Or, uh, to... Kelton Frush, biggest tree between Mast and the Lodge. All right. Thank you. That's the biggest tree. Where is he? The thing is, I don't see it in my activities. That's the biggest tree. so difficult. Is he gone? What was the name of that guy? I don't know. Right, it's still going to be in my inventory as a quest item, right? That 
That's the wrong tree, says Chad. It should be marked. I know it should be marked. Thanks the stars, the spaceport is open. It's my frustration that it's not marked, right? Because it's an activity, and I don't remember his name. I mean, his name is Kelton. Oh, there he is. No, it's Emilio Haydick. Right. Or not. I can't speak By to him. By the way, Captain, Sergeant Yumi was looking for you. Sound like he's got more work. Sergeant Yumi? A tree near to mass. All right. I don't know. I'm kind of worried. There he is. I hope Kelton Aquila Christ. City has what we need. Have you paid a visit to Miss Kessler in Aquila City? We could say here, there's a museum director who doesn't like me very much, or she wants it back when you're done with it. Yes, yes, of course. I'll see that it is returned to her in one piece. Well, perhaps minus a few shavings. Now, I just need a moment to analyze this and synthesize an audio response to our friend here. All right, so we'll feed in a sample. Now the program will incorporate the genetic and chemical makeup of the sample, extrapolating the size and structure of the original tree. This was put together rather hastily, so complete accuracy is impossible. But I'm hoping it's enough. And there it is. Our best hope for a positive solution to this mess. So, we now have a simulated response to our tree. All that's left is to play it. How do we play this? An excellent question. I have been wondering myself. I've been forced to listen to this SSNN kiosk chatter incessantly this entire time. <laughs> I think it could be put to better use. As have we all. We don't have time to go through the proper channels, but... If you can find a terminal and get this uploaded into their system, it might do the trick. We're gonna hack it? We're gonna hack SSNN. That sounds great. Now, uh, we could pass a medicine check to say exposure to the frequency in the simulation could be potentially harmful. Are you sure we should do this? You're right. There's a chance that there could be some minor adverse side effects, but none would be life-threatening. We won't play the broadcast loud or long enough to cause any major or permanent damage to humans or other organic life. And aside from that, if we don't calm this tree down soon, well, I fear that the vibrations it's emitting will eventually reach such strength it could severely damage our internal organs. Wow, this tree is seriously in heat. And if this doesn't work? Then I fear all this hard work will be for naught. I would hate to see this tree come down, but we may be out of options. That seems illegal to me. Well, yeah. But we're trying to save a tree here. I'll take care of it. I have no doubt that you will. I'm glad to see you. Okay, optional talk to Nadia Mafaz. All right, let's make sure we're tracking the right quest here. And of course, it's not at the top of our list. I don't think this quest is in my log. The Tree Whisperer, says chat. Yeah, uh... 
It's not in my quest log, guys. Look at this. Oh, late bloomer. Here it is. Oh, thank God. Okay. Talk to Nadia Mafaz. We Wait, we're doing all of them again. Hold on. Show only active targets. Uh, hold on a second. Late Bloomer, it was called. All right, so we could uh, go ahead and automatically, or go directly to uploading the audio to a terminal, but let's see what happens if we talk to Nadia Mafaz first. Perhaps we can get some permission. The reviews are in for the latest ships from Skyyard across the Sun system. And the final scores were surprisingly tight, with Tayo Astroneering earning a single award more that rivals Stroud Eklund. Mm. One judge said, Technologically, it's neck and neck. Really, there's no bad choices this season. Rumors abound that Stroud Eklund has one more trick up its sleeve to reclaim its title from last year. You're listening. We to work SF to live, NN. but can't make a living. So then we begin to live to work and do that every day until we die. Is that really all there is to life? That's just how things are. Bad news for the I'm telling you, it's a cover-up. They don't want us to know the truth. A prospective colonist well, family used list resources to find a new home, a remote moon filled with life and ideal for farming. The only problem is that moon does not exist. So instead of starting a new life, free of rules and completely self-reliant, the family returned to New Atlantis and filed a lawsuit. List told our reporter, it was a simple data entry error. It should have been listed as 3B instead of 2B. We're just a resource, and we're not liable. Oh, no, let's... That was little comfort to the irate would-be colonists. Oh, no! List made a, made a mistake! All right, uh, Nadia. Nadia, is she... I guess she's down there. A simple spreadsheet error destroyed the hopes of a poor family. Okay, let's go to the commercial district. While we're here, maybe we, sh we can tell her more deeds of our exploits. You have that look in your eye. What's the scoop? You talk and get paid. I spread the news. It's a classic win-win. I need to get something broadcast at an SSNN kiosk. Well, you've already helped me with that. I've gotten some good scoops off of you, and I won't forget it anytime soon. What's the story this time? Lives are at stake if this audio doesn't play. This file is the story, or it will be once it's played, or I need a specific audio file played at the kiosk near Mast. Okay. I think you're going to have to give me a little more information because right now this sounds like the sort of thing that could get me fired and possibly land me in jail for a treason and or a terrorism. <laughs> We could lie and say it's the only way to counter a secret mind control plot by House Varun. Or I don't understand the details. A scientist from Mast put me up to this. Or the tree outside Mast is liquefying and vibrating. It's potentially dangerous. This audio will stop it. Well, now this just sounds like a practical joke. But you've been a reliable source so far. There we go. All right. 
I'll do it. But if I lose my job over this, I promise you, I will come after you. Oh dear. <clears throat> okay. I have a feeling we'll see each other again. Let's return to the tree and see what happens. Really? All the way over here? In business circles, it's considered common wisdom that Sidonia's best days are long behind it. Until now. A recent pharmaceutical breakthrough has meant that the previously worthless mineral known as oh, yeah. hematite now has a vital impromptu use. That was all the way back at the beginning of our playthrough. Did you hear? Go see a bad ball game sometime. Okay, here we go. For over a hundred years, there have been tales of the fabled mantis. Hey! The mantis, supposedly, is a vigilante that would prey upon criminals and pirates. Even the most cutthroat of fleet pirates feared the mantis. It has been many years since we've heard any report on the Mantis, until now. Until Your now. Your security interrogated spacers who claim that Mantis is back and thirsty for righteous vengeance. Security says that this is just the latest retelling of a ghost story. But for myself, I hope it's real. Go get him, Mantis. Yeah, will do. I am the Mantis. Rawr. We've done it. I'm already seeing reductions in the strength of the vibrations. The tree is calming down. I can hardly believe that worked. What happens now? I don't know. <laughs> We've been in uncharted territory this whole time. That doesn't stop now. With the immediate crisis hopefully over, I can slow down and review everything we've learned. And certainly, I'll be keeping a much closer eye on our friend going forward. And you, you have saved this tree and advanced our scientific knowledge of our environment. Noble work across the board. You have my gratitude and that of every citizen in New Atlantis, though they don't know it. Okay, what about the branch? Do we give it back or do they, does he give it back? been under investigation on various counts of possession of illegal cultural artifacts and stolen goods found what some may say is karmic justice captain petro while what was stolen remains unknown its value is expected to be extreme also on board was an exotic collection of animals whose cages were open unleashing what sources have called a zoo gone wild ssnn is still looking into the identity and whereabouts of the thief All right, Kelton, your job is done. The tree seems to have calmed down. Thank you for everything. And we saved New Atlantis. Right. So this is done. I've got two activities to talk to Sergeant Yumi here. And I'm in town, so let's try that. For years, Allied Armament has been the premier supplier of private firearms. But this coveted position may be slipping. Laredo Firearms has been ramping up production in Aquila City and are taking away market share. And it's not just Laredo that's a threat. Core Kinetics and Combatech have been making gains as well.
Spaceport. All right, Yumi, it has been a while. Let's see what's up with uh, with Yumi. What are we needed for this time? I feel like we've been running all around to Atlantis for weeks now. And every security officer wants us to check in with Yumi. Whenever you come back, I wonder what new entries will need to go into your anthology. Oh dear God, adoring fan. Right, I'm After back. After that business with the Termorph, it's good to get back to small crimes and petty thieves. Oh, Captain, it's good to see you again, under much calmer circumstances. You wouldn't be here about the job, would you? Might not be worth your time, considering your rank. Oh. Well, if that's the case, I may not be interested. A job? Tell me about it. Part-time security officer. The position's very flexible. Uh, you can basically work whenever you're available. No pressure. No, no. We've had some gaps in the schedule lately. Macy's out on maternity leave. Jose's on loan to Sidonia. When it rains, it pours type of situation. So really, we just need someone to fill the void. Interested? Maybe. Is this going to give me a bunch of radiant quests? I'm interested. All right, Captain. Just keep in mind, this isn't going to involve your usual level of excitement. Okay. <laughs> no mind-altering terramorphs and explosions in the spaceport. Just simple, good old-fashioned police work. They're really your first assignment down my couldn't be easier. Go to Mast and check in with Agent Plato at Aegis. There was a package left at a dead drop, and they need UC security to handle it. He'll fill you in on the details. Oh. Okay. So it's not a Radiant quest. That's great. Speak to Agent Plato. After all this time, we can still ask, what's Mast? He'd better just ridicule me for this question. You know... Mast, uh, the Military, Administrative, and Scientific Triumvirate. Giant building in the center of the city? Headquarters of the entire United Colonies? <laughs> I really should have given you a more thorough interview. Yeah, yeah, I deserve that. You mentioned Aegis. Who are they? Aegis? They're basically UC Intelligence. They help identify threats to New Atlantis before they become problems. While we're separate departments, there are times we need to rely on each other, so it's important to keep a good working relationship. Hmm. We do Agent Plato this favor, and maybe he'll toss us some intel when an investigation stalled. Tit for tat. You know how it works. So a spy agency. Okay. This has some potential to be really interesting. Why am I bringing this package here and not Aegis? Well... Just because you're bringing it here doesn't mean that's where it'll end up. As for why, you can ask Aegis. As far as I'm concerned, it's none of my business. Has there been any fallout from the Terramorph attack? The whole department is in the process of recovering, myself included. If I'm being honest, I still have nightmares of my team turning on one another. Things can be replaced and wounds can be healed, but building back that trust in each other is going to take time. Luckily, we've built a good culture here, and we hired some new recruits who were inspired by what you did. I've got faith we'll survive this. Okay. See you later. <clears throat> well, I am intrigued. I didn't realize the United Colonies had a spy agency, though I suppose, of course they have to. They've got to have like a like a CIA type uh, branch of the government. Let's uh, see exactly you what this is all about. Are the greatest? No, no, no. Better than the greatest. I know that's grammatically impossible, but somehow you managed to do it. <laughs> it's grammatically impossible, but I managed to pull it off. I wonder if this is 
going to have anything to do with those two agents that we saw sharing details in that walkway above uh, Mass that one time? Remember when we got close, they kind of turned around and walked away? We didn't get a quest. We didn't get an activity. We didn't really get anything from that. So I wonder if this is going to be part of that. What? Defense Research slash Health and Human Services slash Aegis. The fewer people there are thinking about Aegis on a daily basis, the easier my job is. You are, of course, welcome at any time here in Mast. Same as anyone. Just be aware that you are being monitored. What is it you do here? I'm the acting head of Aegis, the intelligence division here in Mast. I oversee all our active projects and agents in the field, and I'm afraid that's about as much detail as I can give you. Not even someone with your list of accomplishments can receive the proper clearance to know more. Nothing personal. What can you tell me about Aegis? All you really need to know is that we're here to serve and we're the good guys. Our main priority is the safety and security of the citizens and assets of the United Colonies, wherever they may be. We keep an eye on, well, everything. <clears throat> so, your spies? That is a word that has been used, both for good and ill, to describe us at times. So how many agents do you have working for you? That's a level of detail I can't get into. Don't worry. We've got plenty of good people working hard. We could say any agency that feels the need to point out that they are the good guys usually aren't. Or it must be hard not being able to talk about much. You get used to it after a while. And it makes the occasions where you can all the more meaningful. Your name is Plato? <laughs> no. My parents would never have been so presumptuous. Every agent who joins Aegis gets to choose a pseudonym, pending approval, of course. I chose this for myself when I signed on. I have, of course, since learned that I am not nearly as smart as I thought I was as a younger man. <laughs> I suppose none of us are. Are we going to find Agent Socrates? Aristotle, maybe? So, what is Aegis? We're the intelligence arm of the United Colonies. Think of it this way. You see security response to threats. It's Aegis's job to anticipate and prevent them. I was asked by UC Security to pick something up. They've got you doing grunt work, Captain. Hardly the reward I'd expect for saving the city from a terramorph attack. I really need the credits. No job is too small for me. Sergeant Yumi needed the help, so I volunteered. Admirable. I bet qualities like that are precisely why you've moved so quickly up the ranks. But I'm sure stopping a terramorph invasion didn't hurt your case. In any case, let me fill you in. We have a dead drop that we think has been compromised. So I'd like someone from UC Security to handle the pickup instead. Take the package back to Sergeant Yumi, and he'll check it in as evidence before it gets routed back to Aegis. Oh man, I feel like I'm working with the railroad. Going to check a dead drop? All right. What do you mean the location's been compromised? We think non-UC-affiliated groups have their eye on it, and are using it to identify field agents. Normally, we just burn the location, but we didn't get this intel until after the drop. So we're going to need non-Aegis personnel to do the pickup to cover our tracks. Why meet with me personally? 
Well, I told the sergeant that anyone hired for this job should get my stamp of approval first. Nothing personal. It's just this sort of work isn't part of your normal detail. Of course, you're the last person I expected to be walking into my office, Captain. Suffice it to say, you're qualified. Uh, all right, got it. Just tell me where to pick it up. Take the NAT to the spaceport. There should be a Galbank ATM right next to the station. The package is taped under one of the benches. Grab it and deliver it to Sergeant Yumi and the job's done. So I probably shouldn't be asking this, but what's in the package? Just the usual reports from agents in the field on persons of interest. Right now, the information isn't as important as who we're tracking. All right. Good luck with the mission. Sounds easy. I'm just a delivery man. Seems like no matter what game I'm playing, I'm some sort of courier. Nat Station. the Galbank ATM to steal money. Wow. I didn't even realize I could do that. Look at that. And it is indeed taped to the bottom. Agent Plato's package. All right. Deliver the package to Sergeant Yumi. How's the investigation going? Still have questions? Go ahead and ask. I've got your package. Good work, Captain. Suffice to say, you were overqualified for this job, but given our staffing problems, I'm still glad you showed up. That being said, my luck seems to be turning around. We've gotten a lot of new personnel as of late, not just you. Who knew all I had to do was put up a sign? Whatever. Just give me my credits. Or glad it worked out. Or I wouldn't make a habit of recruiting people off the street. Mm, yeah. For a position like this? That's a good point. Well, I have you now. So I probably won't hire another person for a while. Anyway, here's your payment. And if I have any more work for you, I'll let you know. That's it. Level 50. That's it. For a spy agency, I, I was expecting like a, a longer quest chain, you know? Maybe I gotta wait a little bit and uh, they'll reach out to me with more missions. Ah, if it isn't my favorite part-time security officer. Crime has slowed down since you started helping out, which is good for morale. How are the day-to-day -day operations going? Uh, it's a lot of work, as always. People like to say, New Atlantis is the safest city in the settled systems. How hard could your job be? Well, safety doesn't happen by accident. It takes a lot of work and a lot of people. I'm looking for work if you have any. I've got nothing at the moment, but come back later. And I might have something for you. Mm, all right. See you later, Captain. Well, hopefully that's just the first in what will become uh, an interesting quest line of stealth and espionage quests. You have a nice day now. Hi, 
I... Please disregard. I... It's good to be back in our own ship. Dong Ho Choi says he gives more quests as time passes. I think there's something like four so, or five more. I hear you've been making yourself pretty useful around the ship. That's good to know. Thank you, Dong Ho Choi. Well, um, let's see. With the primary plot over, we could do what I've kind of been wanting to do, which is just explore. And, uh, this system has a bunch of stuff I've never seen. Now, there is Gagarin, which, as I've said, is an absolutely beautiful planet. And there's Gagarin Landing, which has a bunch of side quests. We could go there. Uh, let's see. There's Kurtz, which is marked. I don't believe I've done anything there yet. I wonder why it has a giant asteroid there. And there's a ship icon right around Grissom. Have I been to Grissom and Bondar? I don't think so. I wonder what this ship is um, in orbit. Have I been there before? Let's go check it out. Weapons locked. I have, Dad. I want to be as good a co-pilot for the captain as I am for you. Well, you're doing a great job, String Bean. I'm proud of you. What do you say we get you a new outfit next time we're planet side? It still fits, Dad. And I love it. Now, a new book. Quiet! God. Then Rob drives down. A Deimos armored transport. But we just saved them from an attack, so I wonder what this is all about. A Deimos armored transport. We're docked. Perhaps we can find some indication of why this ship was vacated. It's vacant? Huh. Do we have a mystery? I think we might have a mystery. happened. What is going on? Give up wow, what is going on? <laughs> Gravity is just going crazy on this thing. I love this. Why is this the first time this has happened? Dong Ho Choi says, systems you visit glows in the galaxy map. Thank you very much, Dong Ho Choi. Requesting rescue. Outgoing message, SOS requesting rescue. The system we jumped to is experiencing unexpected solar flares. Took out the ship's systems and they are having trouble restarting. SOS requesting rescue, outgoing message. So could a solar flare be tinkering with the gravity on this thing? Oh, wow, this is trippy. I love it. Okay, this... Why do they even try? Always worth checking. Never know what you might find in their pockets. Wow, I love this. I mean, it's a little annoying. I'd hate for every single one to be like this. But it's a nice change of pace. All right, we got a dock. All right, I wonder what's upstairs. Because we kind of skipped over that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah. Did we go in here? I think we did, yeah. But what's up here? The ship might be deteriorating. We should not stay long. 
We've got one door, two doors. Jeez. Oh. All right, this this gun is interesting, but it's just so small. Can we access the terminal? No, we can't. A novice lock safe. Hey, Vanguard Space Tactics 4. Permanently increases ship repair speed by 5%. Nice. Uh, I'm not going to bother with a novice lock. You know what? For such a cool feature, I'm surprised this is the first time I found a ship where this is happening. I mean, there have been a couple of other ships where... I think actually only one other ship where it didn't have any gravity. But for it to be turning on and off like this, I'm surprised it hasn't happened more often. If we want to get at whatever is inside this vault, we will need to restore power. Okay, so we got a vault there. Encounter, or if it's always refined magpulse. Ooh. Is refined the one I want? Refined, advanced, or exquisite, like I forget which prefix says that it's the best kind. Right? So we've got a um, an elevator, but it's That's how we're gonna get up, okay. We're gonna have to wait until we've got a, a gravity moment, but first let's finish explore, exploring this room. All right, we came from here, right? No. What was that? Yeah, there's the vault. But this is a dead end, so we need to go up. Up the elevator shaft. Oh. That's docking. Oh. <laughs> so weird. Dead scientist. It's hard to loot. I can see why they don't do this more often. It's a little hard to loot. There we go. Let's go I got this. Oh! That goes down to the next floor. Oh my god. Sorry, sorry, Andrea. I it's the helmet. <laughs> She's wearing my mantis helmet. And I didn't recognize her for a minute. Wow, armor plated navigator pack.
Worse, 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 worse. It's all worse. You have made it. Oh man, the shotgun has kicked. Of course it does. Oh, they thought of that. It pushes me back. Look. It pushes me back. That is so cool. Leadline deep mining space pack. It's worse. Wife's letter. Michael, I don't know if you, you'll ever get to read this. I feel like I should write it anyway in case something happens. If this somehow ever finds its way to you, I hope it brings you the closure that you need. This, the ship has been getting bombarded by solar flares. The systems are out and the engines are dead. If by some miracle we are able to get things running again, another flare hits us and we're back to square one. We've been sending SOS signals out, but so far it's just been radio silence. I don't think we'll be able to get out of this one. I don't really know what else to say, but I just want you to know that I love you. Give the kids a hug and a kiss for me, and All right, so the spacers came after the fact, it looks like. Down to the next floor. Oh, man. Hold on. My cigar is out. There we go. Okay, that's a toughie. <clears throat> Where's that mag shear that I just picked up? I got a mag pulse. Hmm. I haven't tried this yet. Fire rate of 33. Same as that, though. Fire rate of 17. so much. 
It was a legendary shotgun. All right, was there anything in this room that I missed? Besides a hole in the ground. Hey, yeah, look at all this. Just a basic boost pack. Trying to navigate this can be really tedious. Okay, so we've got uh, that stand clear. Let's fix it here first. Oh. Rescue protocol. Rescue is en route. All personnel are expected to promptly report to the docking bay for evacuation procedures when notified. Failure to comply in a timely manner will result in disciplinary action. Oh, yeah. No thanks. <laughs> well, at least it turns off when the power is out. But what's this? Open door. Ah, oh, right. This was the security door we passed. No, 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 bad timing, yeah, okay, <coughs> that was the security door we passed in the elevator, all right, we gotta wait, this is all terribly unstable and potentially hazardous, Alright, this is the other side of that broken door we saw. Good God. Got some leaking gas here, but I want to explore over here real quick. Nothing. Open door. What door did I open? Oh, the vault door. Okay. Well, we gotta get back there now. Wait. Or jump over it. Here we go. Now we have to wait. There we go. Okay. Oh! Need a moment to walk that off? I'm okay! Right. Well, we're not fixing the gravity issues, but we opened the door at least. There it is. What's inside the vault? Of course. Everything. 
nothing of worth will be at the top of that. Well, well, well. Master take Lock! A See if there is anything here we should take. Alright, it's giving me an opportunity to uh, test my hacking skills here. Might as well use some of my auto slots. I've got a few of them. All. None. All. Top two. Bottom two. Bottom. All. 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 Middle. Well, uh, this fits there. And that can fit there. Right. That's bottom. So we could go there. Go there. And go there. But that's my only one. And I don't want to waste it. So bottom only. If we do that, then we're going to need that one. Right. Hmm. So we're going to have to find another way to do this without using those two. <clears throat> we could use uh, that there, but that overlaps that. We could use that there. Okay, but that still makes us... That still leaves us with one. So the only other option is to use that. But that leaves us with one there. Um, crap. If we use that there, then we could use... Tell you what, auto slot. Oh, I didn't even see that. But now... What? What? Whoa, we got a bit of a glitch going on here. What? <laughs> okay. Something's not right uh, with this. But we could do that, and we've got this left over. I was wondering why that wasn't working. The icons weren't showing up correctly. All right, we got mines, rabbit pass, helmet. Ooh, staggering, suppressed, advanced razorback. I'll take it. Helmet display, galvanized. Advanced Bounty Hunter Space Helmet, it's better than anything I'm currently wearing, I think. Yeah, 90, 80, 88, 71, 79, 75. So it's slightly better on stats. Beast Hunter, eh, reactive, nice. Analyzer, eh. So two, uh, two of the three legendary effects on that I don't like. This gives me bolstering. Yeah, and galvanized. Okay, this is better. Not bad. Let's check out what's in this one. Oh, Bogna what? Bognadov's boutique liquor set, boxed set. Is that a quest item? A unique item? What is that? Bogdanov's Boutique Liquor. Wow, okay. What is that? Brought the site. I'll take it. It's for another quest, says the Great Ghost. Wait, did I explore a quest destination before actually getting the quest? Oh, well, I wonder where do I go to get that quest? A settlement because it's for a liquor shop, uh, liquor shop, I guess. And then this one's busted. Oh, is there anything back there? 
Not much. Oh, now I'm encumbered. Yeah. Now it's blocked. Can't get back there. Ah. So that was it. That was in the vaults. <laughs> that was <clears throat> quite a leap. Hey, don't laugh. I think that's it. Interesting location. Well, I really loved this. That was fun. All right, back to the ship. The Great Ghost says, can't remember, but a bartender will ask you to get this. Okay, well, I should probably go find that quest wherever it is. Uh, now that I've got the booze to return. But uh, I'll probably have to look it up, because I have no idea how to go off. I mean, I could go to every single uh, tavern in the settled systems, but aside from that. All right. Um, it's the bar lady on Gagarin, says Clell Biggs. Is that it? Well... Sadly, I'm all out of time, so I'm going to go ahead and do a hard save here, and maybe in the next broadcast, we'll go to Gagarin and turn this quest in. Project Journeyman says, Scotch plus cigar, if you cross the pond ever. Thank you, Project Journeyman. That is reason enough. I'll have to make the trip sometime. Well, that's it for today's broadcast. Got a lot of side quests done. Uh, that was a really interesting exploration that we did at the beginning, and that last ship was so much fun. Uh, I wish there were more ships that had faulty, faulty uh, gravity systems so that we could explore in anti-gravity. That was, that was great. Uh, but that's going to be it for today. If you have any ideas of places I, I should go, ships I should visit, star stations I should explore, or even planets and moons that I have uh, hitherfore to avoided, let me know in the comments below, and I'll try to make it next time I do a Starfield broadcast. For the rest of this week, Wednesday, tomorrow, we're going to be playing some more Baldur's Gate 3, and then on Thursday for Scotch and Smoke Rings, after our hour-long Q&A, we'll get right back into playing the Resident Evil 4 DLC Separate Ways, which we have been thoroughly enjoying. As for me, I need to get to work on my lore video for the weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a blast. And I hope you'll tune in for it. That, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Try to stay warm. That's what I'm doing. I'm really cold right now. I'm going to stand in front of the fire for a little bit. And I'll see you soon with more lore videos and more live streams. Bye-bye now.